All right, guys, this is the moment you've been waiting for. It's time for the Super Mario Series Relay Race. Well, welcome, everybody, to the 2D Warpless Mario Relay. If the uh, staff is ready for us, we can go ahead and get started pretty soon. All right, I'm going to count it down to five. If you guys like to join me, that'd be fine. So in five, four, three, two, one, go! Woo! All right, well, to start off with, um, we have our three teams here. We have Team... Uh, we have Team Birdo, we have Team Boom Boom, and we have Team Resnor. Uh, up for Team uh, Birdo, we have Mr. Cab, 55. For Team Boom Boom, we have Lack Attack, 24. And for Team Resnor, we have Cosmic, D, 12. Yep, and uh, we could do a quick roll call. I'm John Carls. I am representing Team Birdo. Who's representing Team Birdo? Team Birdo. Woo! I'm Author Blues, and I'm representing Team Boom Boom, also the winning team. Not so much. Uh, I'm Skybills. I'm representing Team Resner. Y'all better make me proud. Let's hear you scream. So you'll notice right away some differences in strats going on here. You'll notice that Mr. Cab is using a large fire Mario, whereas uh, Lack Attack and Cosmic are still small Mario. Um, that will the... change a little bit later, though. Yes. Uh, previous to... Um, SGDQ, uh, Lack Attack used to always use Small Mario, for, or Fire Mario for this category, um, but over preparations for SGDQ while he was here, he learned uh, Small Fire Mario, so we're actually very fortunate to be able to see all three strats on display. You're going to see Cosmic D uh, using Small Mario. He definitely is, uh, probably at least for this game, the favorite to win. Uh, he has the much strong, uh, stronger PB despite using the much more difficult strats. Um, but the Small Fire Mario is a compromise between just losing a little bit of time while at the same time uh, saving time by having fire uh, and having the safety of being smaller. Uh, and you're going to see that at the end of 1-4. Uh, some weird things are going to happen pretty soon. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Throughout this whole relay, you're going to get to see a showcase of several different types of strategies for beating these games warpless. And a lot of it comes down to player comfort, especially in a no-reset situation like a marathon like this. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see uh, the risky strats versus maybe some safer strats. All right, so what you just saw Lack Attack do here is set up for a small fire. Uh, and what that means is he's now in a glitch state where the next two power-ups he gets is going to put him in Fire Mario state while still being Small Mario. And you're going to see that come up here. Uh, the big difference in the time so far that you're seeing here is that uh, both runners, uh, Lack Attack and Mr. Cab, actually had to slow down to get power-ups, whereas Cosmic was able to press through World 1. The advantage of being small Mario in this glitch state is that you get to keep the small hitbox that you would normally have with small Mario, but you get to use the power-up of having uh, fireballs, which uh, helps in two ways. It helps you clear out enemies in stages, um, and it also helps you kill um, the Bowser fights faster. Um, the animation for the bridge does not occur when you kill uh, Bowser with the, uh, or Koopa with the uh, fireballs. Yeah, and don't let the um, strange animation fool you. Whenever Lack Attack shoots his fireball, you see his uh, sprite kind of go back into the large Fire Mario state, but his hitbox actually doesn't match that. So he's actually safe the whole time. And speaking of hitboxes, the hitboxes, particularly on the Piranha Plants, are much more generous in this game than in the Super Nintendo version. So if it looks like on any of these players are getting close to a Piranha Plant, they're really not going to take a hit. The hitboxes are very generous in this version. Yeah, some of the players in uh, Super Mario 2 Lost Levels uh, have decided to use the SNES version. There's a lot of different reasons to choose one version over another, um, but we're going to see one of the runners using the Famicom Disk System and two of the runners using SNES. Um, and one of the big differences between those two versions is the fact that in the SNES version, those Piranha Plant hitboxes have been fixed, which means that if you want to make them over with any speed, uh, you have to take a different approach than just the normal jumping over them that you see often with some of these uh, NES versions. Okay, Arthur Blues. So the most commonly asked question in Darby and Stream when he's playing this game, why do they hit the top of the flagpole instead of the bottom? What's the deal? 
All right, so the thing about this game is is that you have to wait on the flag to come down in any case. But uh, what's important to note is that what actually makes the difference between hitting the top of the flagpole and the bottom of the flagpole is if you actually hit the top of the flagpole, uh, Mario jumps off the side of the flag without touching the block. And for, uh, for, for whatever reason, when Mario is in the air backwards, he actually accelerates faster, which allows you to get to the castle a few frames earlier. And in some stages, that can make the difference between making the earlier frame rule. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar, um, Super Mario 1, Super Mario Brothers 1 and Super Mario Brothers 2 Lost Levels both operate on what people refer to as a frame rule, which means that uh, unless you can beat the stage 21 frames faster, you can't really save any time. The game is sort of locked to these 21 frame cycles. Yeah, Darby and Professional Analogy Giver actually explains it as a uh, bus waiting for you every 21 frames at the end of the level. And so it doesn't really matter how many frames you gain or lose as long as you make that frame rule or that bus uh, schedule. So all these runners are doing a really oh, great job. Oh, a song. Death by Cosmic on one of the Hammer Brothers in 3-1. That's going to put um, Mr. Cab in the lead and Lack Attack slightly behind him. Yeah, the big difference that you're seeing between runners so far, aside from, from small mistakes, the big differences you're seeing is just the number of power-ups that were necessary. In order to get into this state, Mr. Cab needed to pick up two power-ups, which cost whatever time he had to slow down for them, in addition to the actual power-up time, uh, whereas Lack Attack actually had to pick up uh, three power-ups over the course of the run. Mm -hmm. And you see right there the risk of doing the small Mario strat in the marathon versus doing this uh, either small fire, fire Mario or Fire Mario strat is that uh, the margin for error is a lot thinner in terms of taking damage. Now at the end of these stages, you'll notice that the players will want to buffer their time. Fireworks on a 6, a 3, or a 1, you want to avoid those. So we're going to see those numbers being avoided in this. Yeah, the one firework doesn't actually end up losing any time, but the six and the three can be quite costly, especially if you're anticipating gain specific frame rules. For players who are really confident in their skills and who have played this game for a long time and can play consistently, a lot of times uh, one of the reasons why the randomness of some of the more difficult stages that we'll see later in the run uh, don't actually cause quite as many problems is because of the fact that if you can guarantee that you've gotten the same frame rules, you tend to get the same patterns from enemies. Mr. Cab going into 3-4. And lag close behind. Cosmic's made up some time as well. Mm -hmm. Castle 3-4 is a very challenging castle. Between the fire, uh, fire bar patterns and the very low potaboos that jump out of the lava, uh, this can be a very difficult stage to do quickly, especially with a larger hitbox like Mr. Cab is dealing with. And right there you can see why fire strats are faster, just being able to get over that bridge quickly. Cab having no issue with Bowser there. Another reason why the frame rules can be important is that uh, in the different castles, um, there are these fire bars and, and potaboos, and some of those can be on set schedules. Sometimes even losing frame rules can be uh, optimal for setting the fire bars in the uh, castles a certain way. Um, another interesting thing about Mario 1 that a lot of people will notice if they're new to the run is um, how tight these jumps look as you jump over the piranha plant. The piranha plants actually don't have hitboxes in the uh, top part of the plant, only the stem. So um, you're able to jump through those. That's something you cannot do in the Super Mario All-Stars version. Um, and that'll be a difference that you will see um, when we come to 2J, when one, uh, one team is going to be playing on, uh, on uh, All-Stars and one on Famicom Disk System. All right, so we see Mr. Cab going into 4-2 earlier. This stage obviously famous at any percent for the uh, most difficult trick in the game, but we get to skip over that here, which is nice. It's nice to see um, sort of the variety of strats. Uh, when uh, you see a lot of runners sometimes opt to choose taking the top of the stage. If you can move efficiently, it's not actually that difficult to get on top of the stage. The only time you really lose is falling back down the shaft uh, of the elevator at the very end that you need to come down. So uh, it, you, know, you see the top runners and you see that they actually play the stage out, but it's quite a bit safer to go above and you don't really lose a bit, very much time. Lack and Cosmic, only about a second between them. Still a very, very tight race. So this is probably the point in the Warpless run uh, where the game kind of ramps up the difficulty. Right after World 4, entering World 5 is where um, a lot of the more difficult parts of the run start. Now, the castles have always been a little bit difficult, but the stages are going to ramp up quite a bit, and you're going to see that coming up pretty soon. Also, the most important and uh, impressive part of this run is that this isn't even Mario's full-time job. So, so <laughs> It's just a hobby for him. 
So heading into 4-4, this is our first puzzle castle. If you do not take the right route, you have to perform that part of the castle again. So really important to know where you're going. Yeah, it loops if you take the wrong path for the stage. Now, Mr. Cab actually had to slow down for the fire bar in 4-4, and uh, he's going to have a special challenge trying to take out the Bowser with the fireball. That was actually a Good really recovery. Good recovery. The Bowser in 4-4 can be one of the most difficult ones. Um, now, both Lack Attack and Cosmic didn't have to slow down for that fire bar in 4-4 because they were small. Um, Lack Attack handled that Bowser perfectly. We have a hundred dollar donation from Bearman that says, "Save the humans, kill the animals, go Team Birdo." Yeah. All right, that was excellent on Mr. Cap's part. It's very difficult to, uh, or it's very easy with just a small mistake if you have to slow down at any point to end up with a six on the clock. You're actually fighting against time to get the seven. So, what are the stakes for this race? What are the stakes for this yeah. race? Uh, well, I heard that the Runner's Choice donations have uh, something to do with that. Well, whatever team wins, I think, gets all of the Runner's Choice donations for the whole race. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And it goes toward whatever that team has decided on. Do you know what your team decided on? Uh, we are going to do Save the Animals. Ooh. Yeah! Skybills, do you know what your team's doing for that? We have chosen to kill the animals and save those frames. I believe my team has all fuzzy photos from Earthbound. I think that was it. Did I get it wrong? No, you did. Oh. I'm just shaking my head at you in disgust, that's all. Plus, all right. there's a side wager going on here, isn't there? There may be a side wager going on. <laughs> so, heading into 5 3, these bullet bills are random. Makes the route just a little complicated for these runners. The stage actually presents quite a few challenges. Uh, because of the bullet bills and the concentration of enemies, this is basically just one three, but with uh, random fireballs, or uh, with uh, random bullet bills. But um, because of all the bullet bills that are there, uh, if you don't kill the enemies in just the right way, you can actually end up with some necessary platforms despawning, making it uh, impossible to beat the level. So. So, Alton Sky, you both have played all of these games a number of times, especially in the Warpless Relays. What would you say is the difference between the physics uh, that we'll see throughout this series, starting from 1 and going all the way to World? Well, 1 and 2J are very similar. There's a lot of... There, there are differences. So, if you talk to speedrunners about the differences between 1 and 2J, there are some notable ones. Uh, bounce heights off of enemies, for instance. And, and definitely when you get into uh, issues with whether or not you want to play with Mario or Luigi, uh, for the purposes of this race, I think all runners are using Mario. Um, but it definitely changes quite a lot uh, when you get in some of the later games. So, 2 US um, is very similar to 1 in the respect that there's basically one running speed. Once you get running speed, you're at max speed, and that's what you got to work with, um, with some small differences. Uh, with SMB3, um, there's an actual P-meter, um, and the P-meter controls uh, whether or not you get running speed. And controlling it can be quite a challenge, but uh, I think these runners are up to it. And then Super Mario World kind of borrowed from SMB3 in that regard. Uh, there's a P-meter as well. It's not shown on screen, but uh, controlling it's a lot easier. I think uh, the Super Mario World runners would agree. Yeah. And 6-2 is a really nice stage to have Fireflower for. You can see how much easier that is getting through all of those different pipe jumps than well, it is in Super Mario. Like Cosmic play this. Woo! I mean... It's keeping it fresh. 6-2 is already a challenging enough stage with... Oh, uh, death right at the end of 6-2. This is already a challenging enough stage with a power-up. Doing it small Mario only is... Definitely. We have a $50 donation from Mr. Cab's little sister. Woo! Saying, go Team Birdo. Notice how all the donations are for Team Birdo. Seems like a smart decision to me. So how about we make a wager on this? I think we already did. Okay. What is that wager? Uh, so, whichever of our teams beats the other one, uh, that person has to speedrun a game of the other person's choosing. Okay, so if you guys have any terrible games you want Author Blues to speedrun, worse than the normal ones he runs, you know, tweet at me. Because you're going down. Look at my boy Mr. Cap just holding it down fresh. I don't know, I think that there's still a lot of run left. Yeah.
you know, it's really a testament to Cosmic's still, skill in this category. That, Absolutely. Uh, even with some of the issues that he's had, he's literally right behind these guys. Yeah, with two deaths being one level behind is incredibly impressive. Um, it's the risk you, you take of uh, doing the small Mario strats in the marathon. It's, it's riskier, um, but he's definitely the, got the best PB of these runners and he's killing it. Man. Lack only a couple seconds behind Mr. Cab as well. Yeah, Lack Still made the choice race. to slow down a little bit at the top of the stairs there. He saw that if he had jumped off, he was going to get the three on the clock, which would have earned him three fireworks, as we mentioned before. It only loses a small amount of time to get three fireworks, uh, but it lost less time for him to slow down at the top of the stairs. So that's why he chose to do that. So you're saying Lack's not very patriotic is what you're saying. That's, that's probably what I'm going for. Okay. Now, are any of these runners going to be shrinking their hitbox as they're swimming in these levels? Um, I haven't specifically seen Mr. Cap going for that, but I don't know. He might have been, uh, but he would be the only one who would really be affected by that. Uh, so Mr. Cab losing power up in 7-2, doing a good job of uh, recovering and kiting those bloopers over so that he can uh, stay alive. First time he's lost power up all run, which is yeah, really impressive. For, for large hitbox Fire Mario, that's a special challenge just holding on to it for the whole run. Um, he still has an opportunity in 7-3 if he wants to to get a mushroom. Uh, that would definitely help him quite a lot. Um, Basically evens up Lack and Mr. Cab now. If the initial frame rule is lost, uh, some of these patterns in the water can be very interesting, especially without fires. So for all intents and purposes, RNG here. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of patterns in this game that are completely uh, impossible to navigate at full speed. But man, with with some of the patterns you can get uh, if you're not Ooh. if you're not familiar Cosmic with what you're going doing with. risky going into that pipe and just went past the blooper. He's a bold man. We have a two hundred thirty-seven dollar donation from EFT that says, "Young boys beat thirty-year-old games fast for charity." <laughs> Let's go for Team Resnar. Aww. Okay, so this is our second puzzle castle of the game. It may not seem obvious why they're choosing the route through the platforms that they are, but they are hitting specific triggers in order to prevent uh, the, the level from looping. That's basically what's happening here. Yeah, it's basically a puzzle stage, uh, and the game expects you to keep looping over and over again until you can figure out the exact right path. When Austin and I first started learning the puzzle castles, especially in the lost levels, I asked him, how do you know the routes are here? Austin told me, just take the worst possible path through here. So I think going into World 8, now is about the time to mention uh, the way that we're going to handle the trade-off between games. Um, so just due to, just for a handful of reasons, uh, we decided to add uh, just one minute of downtime between games. That's going to give runners a chance to step in and out. It's going to give us a chance to change between consoles in the cases where we're changing between consoles. And just in general, it's going to keep people from throwing controllers at full speed against one another. Yeah. I thought that was part of the race. We've lost a lot of good men that way, so. 8 1, a particularly long stage. Most of the levels in eight, World 8 are a lot longer uh, than they, all of the levels that we've gone through so far. And SMB1 and SMB2J in particular, I believe there's no checkpoints once you get into World 8, so accuracy is important. Yeah, we're definitely into the area of the run that uh, I, would, I would say is Cosmic's wheelhouse um, now that we're in World 8. Uh, and he's in uh, normal condition, so I think, uh, I think he will be able to make up some time. You can definitely see how much fire is helping Lactag uh, uh, mitigate some of these issues in this stage. Oh, is he, uh, he didn't get a good bill. Yeah, uh, World 8 is definitely a, a level that, uh, or a world that the any percent runners are masterful at. It's, it's basically half of the any percent run, so Cosmic being a prolific any percent runner is obviously very familiar with that. He's probably the best in the world at 8-4, um, 8-4 being the only level that doesn't actually have a, a frame rule um, because it's the end of the game, so you can actually save frames, and I believe he is the best ever recorded 8-4, so going for the mushroom there, and uh, unfortunately the bullet bill uh, being right on top of him as he got it. Yeah, you can see that brief moment of hesitation looking to see if he could get the shot, but... 
wasn't meant to be. Mr. Cab's getting his fire flower back, probably a good choice. The end of this stage can be incredibly stressful with all of the Hammer Bros. Yeah, the Hammer Brothers are probably the most difficult part to deal with in this game casually. And honestly, even speedrunning-wise, a very, very big challenge, um, especially without fire strats. So, smart of them to go the safe route there. And so, Lactech definitely went for the wall jump pixel there. Let's hear it for Cosmic's A3. Oh my gosh. Nice stage, Cosmic. Cosmic had no issues handling those fire or those uh, Hammer Brothers. What you just saw Lack Attack do, and you're about to see Mr. Cab do, is uh, wrong warp. So essentially, uh, you're, uh, they're scrolling the screen far enough to the right um, to kind of move the trigger for where the warp would be, but they can still get into the pipe, and uh, they will actually end up going to that water section instead. That's not where that pipe's intended to go. They are actually tricking the game into thinking that. And with that, we have the end else. of SMB1. Team Boom Boom in the lead. Sub, sub 20 minutes by Lack. Really, really nice time. Really impressive. That's a solid run to start off this relay. It's a really good run. We actually got a $50 donation from Silly Person that actually said, Go Team Boom Boom. Finally. And go Lack Thank Attack. You. So, great job. You can R see really the special challenge that uh, Mr. Cab had. 2014 for Cab. And there we go nice. for Cosmic. So as they set up, we're looking at less than a 30-second gap between all three teams. So this yeah, is this still is incredibly super tight. super close race. N nothing's even begun to be decided yet as we go into a very difficult speed game, Super Mario Bros. 2 US. And with that, we have Justifin going ahead and starting off Super Mario Bros. 2 US. He's going to be picking Toad right out the gate now. Uh, you're going to actually see a lot of really interesting strategies right at the beginning of this game. There's a lot of really interesting tech in this game. Uh, obviously, for those of you who have ever seen a Super Mario Bros. 2 US uh, speedrun, um, the most important tech is that, for whatever reason, Toad, being the slowest character in the game, they decided that all he has to do is pick up an enemy, and he's now the fastest character in the game. That, and that's what they're... Uh, oh? We're getting a little uh, fuzz on our screen here. Nothing Sven can't handle, though. Oh, and just Sven dying on Birdo at the end of 1-1. One, one. Uh, one of the most difficult parts about this speed run is that the uh, there are no continues. Um, when you die in a world, you start at the beginning of that world. So if you die on 7-4, you start back on the at 7-1. Um, can make this game really unsafe for a situation like this, especially trying to push the game as fast as you can. Nice trick by Sven there. So, uh, something interesting to note about this game is that this game is subject to a lot of... Um, this game This game has a lot of similarities with SMB1 in regards to uh, frame rules. So, you might think that this game doesn't really have frame rules to it, but one way to think about it is at the end of every single stage, uh, there's a fight against Birdo, and in that fight against Birdo, Birdo shoots eggs, and those eggs are actually on a global timer. So based on when they start the level, uh, every, I think, 254 frames, Birdo fires another egg. So you can see Sven doing a quick carpet trick where he gets on one carpet and swaps, uh, makes the carpet go considerably faster, and um, he's able to skip over a whole section that you go inside the door and have to get a key for also kind of weird seeing Sven kill a Birdo on Team Birdo. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, but I guess it's kind of necessary if we're going to win the race. So what BJW just tried to do there is pick up a vegetable after coming out of subspace. Unfortunately, no luck, but that would have been able to take out Birdo very quickly. So for any of you who've played this game casually, you've probably seen that at the bottom of 1-3, uh, you, you, you typically go to the, bo uh, the top of the stage to get a key and then go to the bottom of it to open the door. Um, but right there, Justifin did a trick where he uh, clipped through the bottom of the screen, which allowed him to enter right through that door, basically. Yeah, that's already in World 1, two skips of needing to go obtain keys and unlock areas, um, just able to skip through different stuff. This game has a lot of really interesting tech and glitches in it that uh, I think are really interesting and fun. You see Sven attempting it right now. Mm -hmm. Can you actually see <coughs> okay. JW over there trying the same thing? And all three runners pulling that off easily. The pros. That's a very difficult jump to pull off. 
So continuing with our theme to use Toad to go fast, we're going to see Toad for most of World 2, but not just being able to run fast, Toad also digs the fastest, and since this world has uh, two different stages oh. where you spend a lot of time digging, um, you're going to see him proceed through the stage very quickly. Sven dying on Mauser right as he killed him. I'd be remiss not to point out that Sven is the only person in this game that has held the whole world record for this game. That's interesting. He's also the only person with a Swedish flag uh, wrapped around his neck. In my experience, that's true. One of the nice features about the All-Stars version of this game is you can actually skip that fanfare that happens after by pausing and getting the menu repeatedly. Unfortunately, in this version, we don't have access to that menu. We have a $40 donation from KDoodle7 that says, Team Reznor has my heart. I still believe in my boy, BJW. <laughs> BJW have been playing very solid so far. Nailing all the tricks. Couldn't ask for too much more right now. One of the most underrated parts of this speedrun that you might not realize watching it is digging. Digging is really difficult. Do you want to speak to that as somebody who's run this game fairly often? Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, different approaches to digging. Uh, you see a lot of the top runners um, get really good at just digging pretty much straight down, it looks like. And, and they, they pick these specific lines and patterns that uh, allow them to move pretty quickly. Um, but more important than any of that is sort of how do you deal with it if you don't have the rhythm down for digging as fast as possible. Um, one of the issues with that is that as you can see, there's a lot of enemies who would like to fall on your head. But they sort of move left and right based on your position in relation to them. So you can dig specific patterns so that when they fall down to a lower level, they actually just walk away from the hole that you're digging, uh, which is extremely convenient and, and particularly useful for going fast is to not have to worry so much about the enemies falling down on your head. You'll see that Sven actually was able to star kill that Birdo. If you're able to get a star all the way to a Birdo fight, you can just run right through him. And not have to. Uh, yeah, the timing for that can be that. very difficult, yeah, but it's a tight uh, window. if you can do it, it's, it's quite a bit faster. There's an easier version of that Star Kill, too, in uh, World War II. We're going to see a little later on. Yep. So, what other characters can we expect to see in this game? Are we going to see all four characters? Uh, you will see probably all four characters, at least from most of the players. Um, in most of the stages, you pick based on what you do the most of. So, for uh, really stages where you need lots of really long jumps, you're going to see maybe Luigi. If you see stages where it's just a lot of running or digging, you're going to see Toad. Um, there is one particular stage where it's faster to use uh, Princess Peach and or the princess, and uh, that stage is just one where there's one particularly long gap that allows you to skip a segment of the stage. And then for a lot of these runners, you're probably going to see them use Mario in 3-3. Mario is a really well-balanced character, and that stage just has a large balance of going horizontally and jumping vertically. So, My boy Sven throwing the item at Birdo at the same time the egg came out, being able to get a double hit there to uh, save a little bit of time. Overall, the race is still really close. Yeah, this is exceptionally close. Yeah, Just Defense having a little bit of a challenge game that, um, that uh, the power jump. The reason is, is that while you have the star activated, you actually can't see whether or not your character is flashing to indicate that you actually fully powered up. So if you try to rush it while you have the star, you have no visual indicator that you've succeeded. And Sven being a champ, just enduring the, uh, the audio or the, or the visual issues that are going on in front of him, just staying focused. Yeah, I think Sven deserves a, a special appreciation for being able to play under these conditions. It doesn't seem to be affecting him at all, to be honest. Yeah. And there you saw a quick kill on Triclide. Uh, you can actually uh, throw the, the bird directly on him. Now, there's a lot of pretty cool quick kills on these bosses that you might not have ever seen if you've only played this game casually. Um, just really creative strats, in, in my opinion, uh, compared to some of the other Mario games I just really like. This game's definitely kind of the black sheep or a, a very different game than the others, and it's, uh, it's got a lot of really cool speed tech that you won't see in other games of uh, these Mario games either. It looks like BJW just barely missed the, uh, the timing for getting the quick kill on Triclide, but ended up clutching it out at the end anyway. Um, it's worth noting here, if we're just talking about uh, PBs directly, that um, the BJW is definitely the favorite to win for this game. He has uh, by far the strongest PB of the three, though they're all fairly evenly matched, I would say. I just wanted to say, um, uh, before we, you guys keep continuing on, but we did reach $900,000.
That is awesome. Let's get to that one million, guys. We're almost there. Okay, so here's the chance where you're going to get to see Just Defend using uh, Peach in order to, or Princess in order to skip a little segment. Um, there's a gap that otherwise would, wouldn't be accessible, and if you were to try to make that gap, um, you would actually fall in, despite the fact that technically there's supposed to be more stage down there. Yeah. Um, but that jump right there saves quite a bit of time. You're also going to see her being able to jump off of the ladder and go above the level, um, skipping a substantial part of uh, this stage. Yeah, this is going to be a running theme throughout the game. You can actually jump off of vines, ladders, and chains uh, in this game. It's very tight timing, so if you just try to do it by yourself, you know, let's say that you're sitting at home and you fire up your console, you may not get it. Um, but you have a small frame window to uh, still press the jump button when you, um, when you step off of a ladder. It happens to be much larger if you're playing as Luigi. So if you're holding the up button when you step off a ladder, you have eight frames to hit the jump button. Uh, for every other character, it's only three. And if you're not holding the up button, it's only one frame for every character. So it's actually really difficult to pull off. Um, but it's a major part of skipping large portions of some of the levels. Uh, this one and eight or seven one in particular. And here we're going to see the first appearance of Mario. What's the reason for that, Chad? Uh, so this is a, a well-balanced character uh, that works well for what this stage has. So there's a lot of segments with straight climbing, and Mario happens to have a really balanced jump height that also works really well for some of the heights or some of the distances between some of these platforms. So when we get into the next room and uh, he's jumping between platforms, it just so happens that Mario's uh, primary jump height is the perfect height for going between those platforms. And yeah. so balanced between his run speed and his jump uh, and his jump height, he is the clear choice for the stage. And he just boosted that jump off of the uh, enemy to get substantially Ooh. higher than he normally would. You can get a rhythm um, for these vines when you have uh, two chains next to each other or two <coughs> ladders or two vines. Uh, you can get a rhythm for going back and forth between them to climb faster using jumps. We have a $10 donation from Oath for Blues says, Refresh token equals go team boom boom. Nice. Come on. All right, so we have Just Defend right now going into the second Mauser fight. Both of the other runners are going to be going into Mauser 2 in just a second as well. Um, this Mauser fight, the major difference between uh, this one and the previous one is this one takes five hits. And in addition to that, there's also this uh, spark that's going around the screen the whole time. It's very frustrating, casually. <laughs> yes. And you see Sven using Luigi in this level instead of Mario that we talked about. Um, do you want to speak to why he's doing that? Well, I think he said that he had a few specific strats that made... Oh, okay. Yeah, he mentioned specifically that there was a, a frame-perfect glitch. I think it was that door entrance right there. Uh, if you input the jump, up, uh, the jump at the right time, uh, you can skip a little portion of that stage. In addition to that, I mean, all told, the amount of vines that you end up climbing in this stage, being able to have access to just jumping straight up them much more easily, uh, he, it makes him not a worse choice, to be yeah. honest. Luigi's definitely an interesting character to get to used to using casually because of just how floaty he is, but huge advantages at the, some of the speed tech in this game, specifically with ladders and uh, just jumping over certain gaps. So I think I've been told in the past, and, and someone can confirm for me, but I think I've been told in the past that taking that hit uh, as you grab the orb there uh, saves some lag frames. Sorry, and guys, we're yeah, going to go ahead and uh, fix this right now. That's why we have everyone at a pause. Do not worry. It's going to keep going. Okay. All right. Yeah, so just to make this fixed, he's going to go ahead and use the warp to uh, just catch up to where we were at. And yeah, that way we don't have... Yeah, two minutes, I think. Yeah, we don't have video just kind of going crazy on you guys there, so... Maybe one more round of applause for Sven for Absolutely. playing so well up to this point with his, with his console like that. I mean, to be able to pull off the crazy tricks that he was doing in addition to some of the strats that really no one else goes for. And even now, I mean, all he's doing is trying to get back to World 4 and he's playing like fire. <laughs> I'll uh, read a couple of donations while we're waiting um, for Sven to get to 4-1. I have a $200 donation from DeRaven that says, Go Team Birdo. Yeah. Marbles, 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 marbles. Marbles. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. We have a $30 donation from Thompson Harbor that says, I'm so excited for the rest of this race. I had to donate again. Go Team Resnor, killing the animals for my man, Riley. Uh, we have, oh my goodness, we have a $50 donation from the Sticky Stick Man that says, incredibly <laughs> happy to donate during my most anticipated run of this GDQ. Looks like it's going to be an exciting race so far. We'll donate another 15 if Team Boom Boom wins. Another 20 if Team Birdo wins, yeah. and another 25 if Team Reznor wins. Yeah. We also got a $2,000 donation from Tang N. Woo! Supporting MSF is one of the best causes that I could put my morning towards. I've kept my powder dry all this time, but I've got to go support Grand Pooh Bear. It's time to raise the stakes. Money goes towards the runner's choice. Come on, Mario Speedrun community. Let's see if we can push this to one million. One person just needs to do donate $93,000 right now, and we're good. <laughs> yeah, it would just Come be on. totally fine. <laughs> Don't be cheap, guys. Come on. It doesn't look good on you. Got a hundred dollars from Anonymous that says, Go Team Resnar, kill those animals. Okay, so here you're gonna see the warp that uh, you wouldn't normally see in Warpless. All right, and here we go. We're about ready to go. All right, guys, we're gonna count it uh, down again. So, in three, two, one, go! Awesome. It's a nice little halftime break, you know? Yeah. Get some Gatorade. Now I feel like I can really see that screen. Yeah, go over the game plan, talk to the coach. I think it's amazing that even this far into the run, uh, we're seeing these runners this close. Yeah, I mean, there may be favorites and, and underdogs in each game, but overall, these are like, you these know, these are all the best. Fifteen runners. of the best Mario players in the world, and mo many of these runners run mo most of these games. They they don't just stick to their game, and so there's just a lot of talent going on right here. It's pretty amazing to see it all in one place. So here we got Justin going for the for the star kill. Yep, and he got the it. Window four. It's a lot easier in uh, in four two than it is in two one, but <clears throat> this maneuvering this fence doing here. This this part is pretty tricky, at least to newer runners. Just trying to keep your speed and dodge all of these different uh, things flying at you can be pretty tough. And you can see Luigi. F Riding an egg with a plant over his head. So the That's main reason he's choosing Luigi right here uh, is because there's a big gap he can jump over right here that skips pretty much the entire stage. <laughs> it's important not to go in the wrong door, otherwise you'll be locked out of it. That's true. Oh, this fight. <laughs> we all remember this one. Really good fight. That was a great fight. Sven pulling off the star kill himself. Well, BJW goes for the Fry Guy fight. Oh, oh that was a great fight. That was, a, that was risky. And he pulled it off. There's a lot of swagger on Team Resnor. They're going for some bold, bold moves. I respect it. Respect their game. So much of 5-1 can be skipped just over a series of long jumps. Uh, if you miss a jump, you can actually clip into some of those platforms. So not all is lost if uh, some of these runners were to jump Looks a bit like short. Looks like Justin's taking a really quick uh, detour for that extra one up. Yeah, so as we said earlier, this game is really punishing if you game over. Um, you will have to go all the way back to the first level of the world you're in. Um, other games that we're playing here, um, a lot less punishment. So, so taking an extra life there and losing a couple seconds, probably not the biggest um, Oh, deal. wow. So we find our first gray or silver birdo here, and, and that just means you're not going to get any eggs out of that birdo. You have to throw mushroom blocks at it. There's three variants. There's the pink one, which will shoot all eggs, the red one, which will shoot some eggs and some fire, and then the silver ones, which will shoot all fire. What if I'm colorblind, Sky goes? I think they're still the same color. You just can't see it. Oh, okay. That's helpful to know. All right, so you've seen some uh, differences in strats. Uh, Just Defend is cho choosing to use Toad uh, in 5-2. Now, that's a, an interesting choice. Toad obviously runs faster, and you can play the stage faster, um, but Luigi definitely gets the benefit from the Vine section here. So, 
Yeah, this game very unique just in the fact that you can have so many different strategies. In Super Mario Bro uh, Brothers 1, we saw overarching strategies that people maybe do differently. But this game kind of goes by level by level how you feel comfortable, and that's kind of a really interesting uh, you know, thing, especially in a marathon like this, to see so many different uh, approaches. Great fight over here by Just Defend. That's a really tough Birdo. Uh, that's one of the earlier Birdos that we encounter that shoots uh, both fireballs and eggs. Um, and with that fish in the way, there's a gap. It's kind of a smaller segment. It can be very challenging. Another great fight with by BJW. So every time you're seeing Luigi jump off the vine like this, that's um, just, you know an eight-frame window for him to do it. And obviously can just extend through the levels way quicker. It's never getting into level 5-3, probably one of the longest levels of the game. The boss strategy is very interesting here. You need to throw the projectiles into the wall and you can get anywhere from, I want to say, two to five hits. Yeah, it definitely varies. Uh, anywhere from just the normal one hit you might get um, to, in some rare cases, being able to get all five at once. Uh, this is probably the most challenging stage in terms of a casual play, I hate this level. <laughs> um, but this is uh, also kind of a nail biter for a speedrun as well. So it's really amazing watching these guys uh, play this so efficiently. You're gonna see uh, you're gonna see Justin going for the carpet glitch right here. Uh, he's gonna spawn two carpets, and that's going to make the original carpet move a lot faster, especially because at the time Toad is also holding an item, so you get an, an extra speed boost there. Oh, wow. That was sweet. Almost the triple. And now he's going to be going into the clog lip fight. Um, this, this is a uh, crab that throws rocks. He's going to be trying to get his hands on one um, and bank it off of the back wall. Oh! oh. Yes. Really nice. That is extremely hard to pull off for what it's worth. I don't know if that was obvious from watching it. Really nice fight by BJW still. Team Resnor and Team Boom Boom, pretty tight. Uh, I mean, Team Birdo not far behind, still really tight race here. We have a $200 donation from Wallach that says, Team Birdo, Sven is the man. Yeah. We also have a $20 donation that uh, says, Go BJW. I had no idea you were running today, but I love watching you run when you do. Much love, Coco. All three nice, teams right. within a minute of each other. So this is probably one of the most interesting stages to watch. Uh, it's very challenging to learn how to do this. The intended strat for this stage is to just ride one of the albatrosses uh, off to the right. Um, but you're going to see these runners choosing to use Luigi and making these very precarious jumps between enemies. Um, most of these jumps do line up somewhat naturally, but there are a few that are very difficult to pull off. A small frame window right off of the end of one enemy just barely gets you onto the next one. That's yeah, always been strange to me. It's almost like they uh, set that up as an Easter egg to find because of the way those um, the birds are just lined up so naturally to use with Luigi. Definitely. My least favorite part of Super Mario Brothers 2, getting chased by that mask. I have nightmares from being a kid. It's just always after you. Well, you know what? I don't think it scares these runners. Yeah, so I don't think it does. Coming up in 6-3, we have a potion jump here coming up on Just Defend's screen. Yeah, Just Defend and the other runners are going to be trying to use this potion to bank off of and jump over the wall. That's excellent. The alternative is going underneath the wall, which takes time to sink under the sand, and then you move much more slowly in the sand. BJW pulling off without any trouble. We'll see Sven doing the albatrosses now. Yeah, he goes for it uh, with a slight variant in the strat. He doesn't take the, um, the vegetable, which is slightly faster. You don't waste the time picking up the vegetable, but it's very dangerous to do because you only have a one tile wide gap to land on that little island versus Pulls it a off three tile wide. 
this nice. triclide fight uh, is very interesting. You saw Justifin going for an extremely aggressive variant of the strat. Uh, BJW went for, uh, I think, the more common variant. What you're about to see is 7-1 and 7-2, the abbreviated version. Uh, very <laughs> short levels caused by some sequence breaks going on. Yeah, this, this level in general is supposed to be extremely long. I mean, 7-2, even worse off. Here we go, Sven going for the potion jump. First try. Without trouble. No trouble. All right, Justifin was unfortunate to have the enemy that he needed to jump off of despawn, so he's currently trying to get him to spawn back, but unfortunately those pots just keep spitting out enemies and it's causing problems. There he goes. Uh, is that due to a sprite limit? Mm -hmm. It's a sprite limitation. All it takes is the game slowed down just a little bit. I think there's some other uh, things that cause it as well, but losing that enemy, going under is really not a better option. Really, it's just better to always go back and try to respawn it. Sven taking it safe there, because mm -hmm. he was small, pulling off the I think he made the right well. call there. Triclide can be an extremely difficult fight, even for speedrun strats. Especially in a marathon like this, the strategy is really interesting because, um, you know, you don't necessarily need to win or lose your race. You're trying to keep your team in the mix. And so um, sometimes being risky uh, has a price to pay, just not just yourself, but the rest of your team. So An interesting thing worth noting uh, that we just saw from uh, Justifin and BJW is you can actually abuse uh, the little invulnerability period you get whenever you pick up an enemy. You'll probably see it from, um, from Sven here as well. Uh, as Luigi, or really as any enemy, when you're picking up an item, you get some frames of vulnerability. Uh, you benefit from it more as some, a character like Peach or Luigi who pick up items very slowly. But during that whole time, you're invulnerable. So if you want to pick up a block while Birdo's firing at you, uh, you can just wait until the yeah. shot is just about to hit you and then pick up the block and you're invulnerable as the shot goes through you. It makes a lot of the Birdo fights way easier. So this sequence break actually has the... Uh, the interesting benefit of being able to have the key already spawned even before you defeat the Birdo, which allows you to basically just skip it entirely. Wait, wow. that's not Bowser. Yeah, so in this state, uh, in this game we're fighting Wart. I think you guys are mostly familiar with this. Uh, some interesting things to note are that um, as long as these runners don't die in this stage, uh, you can actually guarantee what pattern you get off of the, the vegetable machine. So. Um, it starts spawning in the middle, the next one spawns on the right, then in the middle, then on the left, and back and forth in that way. Um, if they were to die and have to come back into the stage, you actually get the same pattern, but you just don't know where it's going to start from. And with that, we have BJW finishing up Super Mario Bros. 2 US first. That was... I expect sub 50. That really ideas. speaks to BJW's skill in this game. I mean, with the previous run, we had uh, Cosmic finishing up SMB1 last. And just in that time, BJW was able yeah. to pull his team into the first. And we just now have Justin Finn finishing up Super Mario Bros. 2 US. Both of these runners right around a 24 minute time. Really solid work. Yeah, Sven really not too far behind either. No, absolutely not. It's been not. a really uh, tight race all along. No, no major mistakes that have put any team really far out of it. Um, I think we're within about a minute or minute and a half of each other. Oh, and Sven taking an unfortunate death on uh, Wart there. The fight against Wart can be extremely challenging. But it was right at the beginning of the fight, which means it really didn't lose more than probably 10 seconds. So with Sven getting that first vegetable out of the left side of the machine, he now instantly knows what his pattern's going to be. No problems. Oh... Uh -huh. And Oglib kicking off SMB3 uh, over here. All right, so in Super Mario Brothers 3, we have had power-ups so far, but at this point, we're going to have to deal with a different kind of element, and that is items. We're going to be using some items to be skipping some stages throughout the game. So inventory management is very important, something we're going to be talking about throughout the game. You don't want to grab three of any item throughout the game. You want to have differences because you will lose time if you get three stars or three fire flowers. Three mushrooms isn't really that big of a deal. We will have also the P-Speed meter as well. Oof. A bit of a scary fight to warp, but Sven pulls it off. Sub 26. This week get race is still definitely close. There we go. And with that, we just ended up Super Mario Bros. 2 US uh, by Sven. Oglib and Karu are both off to an excellent start uh, with SMB3. This can be a very challenging game to pull off. Uh, management of P-Speed is extremely challenging. 
This is the game based off the movie The Wizard? Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. That's the one. So, right here, what's going to happen is we're actually not going to fight Boom Boom in this fortress. We're going to be taking the whistle. Ha ha ha, wizard references, I know. But this whistle is actually <laughs> going to skip. Uh, the whistle. This whistle's going to skip this part of the stage. It comes with a little bit of a cost here. The whistle is normally what you would use to warp, so that whistle's going to stay in your inventory. You better not mash the buttons, otherwise you're going to be sent off to a far off land. You don't want to do that in a warpless race. We call it no tooting. I think it's important to note that my boy Pooh has the freshest hat collection of any of the runners in this uh, whole marathon. That's true, and I think that that's going to make a big difference for this race. He actually had to bring an extra suitcase just filled with hats. So the first of many Hammer Brothers. Hammer Brothers can cause a ton of RNG in SMB3. We also have the Overworld, which wasn't an element in the other two games. Those Hammer Brothers are going to cause some complications as to which items they carry, where do they head. Um, I, what I want to know, and we'll talk about that in uh, World 2 coming up, is whether or not any of these players are going to get early Hammer, and if so, why did I chose to do that during a marathon versus not? But the hammer will allow them, if they access it early in World 2, to skip three stages early on, at the cost of having to do an extra fortress in World 4. So, Sky and Off, this is the first game that we have here in this uh, race that involves P-Speed. Do you want to talk about kind of the difficulty of uh, maintaining P-Speed and how that affects this speedrun versus the other ones we've watched so far? Yeah, so this game uh, is the first to implement a P-Meter, which means that you do have to build up a certain amount of run speed before you get the opportunity to run at your full potential. Um, the difficulty here is that uh, this game punishes you in certain ways, such as uh, you know movement back and forth, run, running over pits. Any moment that Mario's feet aren't on the ground, you're probably being punished against. Uh, you're being punished with your uh, P speed P meter dropping. Um, these runners are all really used to this, and in general, the the thing is is that just looking at the P meter usually isn't enough to tell the full story. Um, a, a competent runner can usually sort of internalize how far off they are away from, you know, getting their full P speed. Definitely, losing P speed or getting hit can definitely throw off a level um, that you know it looks so easy when you have your P speed and do it perfectly, but just the littlest of uh, mistakes can throw off a level so easily in this game. Also, I think this game needs more auto scrollers. What do you think? No. Worth noting that uh, Karu is the current world record holder for this category with an incredible time, but both of these runners, uh, Oglib and uh, Grand Pooh Bear, have both improved their PBs quite recently. Definitely. actually have really, really great times. This is, this is going to not just be a close match, I think, but it's also going to be really impressive. Uh, it's Absolutely. one thing to have a bunch of people who are playing at a 55 or a, a 58 minute time being all matched, oh, but definitely. being able to see them play at this level and play this competently, or uh, consistently. Is Karu is around a 51 minute time, I believe. Yeah, he's got a 53. 50, 52, I think. Which is just really amazing. So right here, the urge to kind of jump and grab the wand is strong, but here you actually want to stay at the bottom of the screen and just pick up the wand as it falls to you, because it does save time from Mario falling even further if you jump to get the wand. Toad's animation there, really amazing to me. She's in a lot of distress. We're going to help him out, don't worry. We have a $5,000 donation. Wow. From the Kobold Inn, saying, Such an amazing event GDQ is with so many incredible people running and donating. Shout outs to my favorite runner, Pooh. Absolutely. Save the Toastal, save the Princess, save the Kingdom, and as always, save the animals. Go Team Birdo. Woo! So you may think that um, if you've ever watched some of the runs like Super Mario World, for instance, where runners tend to rely very heavily on their cape, you might think that um, the preferred power-up for a game like this would be the leaf. Um, but honestly, even just playing this game uh, casually, you, you get quite the impression that the leaf is quite a bit slower. Using the raccoon tail uh, is slower for movement, and that's exactly what you're going to see throughout the course of this run. There's going to be a few stages where runners will probably be using their P-Wing, if for no other reason than just the access, uh, easy access to a leaf when they need it. Um, but in general, most of these runners are going to be sticking to either Small Mario or Fire Mario, depending on what stage they're in. Um, and that's going to be kind of an important thing to note. It, this game would be quite a lot easier if they were able to use their leaf, but they just won't. Absolutely. 
Sky, why don't you talk about some of the other items that you can pick up that are useful for the game? You mentioned the hammer. What else is there in this game that uh, uh, that kind of just makes a difference in the speed run? Now, we're not going to see the players use the tails often. However, there is an item called the P-Wing. The P-Wing is going to be used to break a couple of levels, such as 6-9. There's also the Jugum's Cloud, which is going to be used to skip entire stages. The one drawback is, and I will have to remind players of this, unfortunately, is um, if you die in a stage after you've used a cloud, you, that will negate what has happened. So if you die in 3.8, you will go back to 3.4 because that is what the worthless route uses. Yeah, so if you are using the cloud to skip an auto-scroller and then you die in the next level, you're going to end up having to redo that auto or have to actually go into that what? auto-scroller. What even happened there? <laughs> We're also going to see a um, couple, couple variants in the SMV3. Uh, Grand Poo Bear is actually going to be using hammer strats to defeat Bowser, whereas Kuro and Glyph both use the uh, fire suit. Wow, that was a... Honestly, I, I wouldn't have even known what to do in that circumstance. That was amazing that Glyph was able to recover that. Absolutely. That was amazing. Uh, honestly. He got really unlucky with the corner clip uh, in the situation, and I, I think either panic or really just not wanting to lose his fire flower at the time just took out both of the Koopas, so he had to go back for another one. Yeah, it's definitely underrated having the ability to react in that way to something that's very unusual to happen in your speed run versus, you know, you have general mistakes that happen that you have backup strats for, but to just know a game well enough to react immediately on what to do. And unfortunately, Gilb getting some uh, bad luck with the Hammer Brother, just going right on top of him there. I, I think bad luck's a little bit of an understatement, <laughs> John Carls. So what Glib's going to do here is use the Hammer. We're actually going to skip the Desert Stage and World Stage 5, and he's going to have to do the Fortress in World 4. So we're going to get to see a stage in Worthless we normally will not get to see, so that's kind of exciting. Oh. Glib just wants more airtime. It's fair. We have a $500 donation from Raz that says, Go Team Birdo, go Pooh. I like you just the way you are. Woo! I'm getting a sense a lot of people like Grand Pooh Bear. <laughs> yeah, one thing that you're probably going to see a lot of, um, and you may not notice it, it can be very subtle at times, um, but if you run at full speed with, uh, with full P meter into the end of the stage, you pretty much always are guaranteed to get the same card. You're always going to get the star card. Which, if you're just playing this game for fun, is fine. That's five uh, lives every time you get three star cards, so that really adds up. Um, but you will see them try to subtly lose a little bit of speed, usually, um, toward the end of the stage, just to offset what card they're going to get, because they desperately want to avoid getting three of the same card. Uh, three of the same card definitely is going to lose them a lot of time. So yeah, There's a whole animation that shoots up fireworks and gives you a bunch of lives that it's... So you're saying all of these runners aren't patriotic? Uh, it's not just fire. You got me on that one. Star. You got me pretty good there. As if you don't have enough to worry about in this game. So there's another thing that's uh, special to this game. The Hammer Brothers can turn into coin ships. While that sounds like that's fun, these coin ships are actually auto scrollers. You don't want more auto scrollers in this run. We have enough auto scrollers in this run. So what's going to happen is we need to make sure these players do not have any multiples of eleven when in the worlds one, three, five, and six. Now, I do want to point out that um, while this game has a ton of room for differences in strats, um, and we have seen, we've been fortunate to see almost every game so far, uh, all of these runners using considerably different strats, uh, for the most part, these games are going to look very similar for SMB3. Absolutely. You're going to see these runners choosing basically the same route. It's pretty set in stone, and there's not a, little, uh, a lot of... Uh, options for them. But one thing that you are going to see as we near closer to the end of the run uh, is you're going to see Grand Pooh Bear using the fire, uh, the, the hammer suit. Um, and that's going to be really exciting because a lot of times you'll see warpless runners pick up the hammer suit but save it until Bowser. But Grand Pooh Bear is actually going to activate it a lot earlier and use the hammer suit to help him uh, with a lot of World 7 and all of World 8. And there's obviously a backup option for him. Um, if he happens to lose it, it's not the end of the run. He, he can grab a fire flower uh, toward the end, and that's not a problem. But the other two runners are going to prefer the more common and conventional uh, Fire Mario strats. Grand Pooh Bear is going to be the one that's really going to differ here, and it's going to be exciting to see that. Um, in addition to that, the uh, Jugum's Clouds that Skybills mentioned earlier, um, 
you can choose which stages you want to skip, and while some of them are pretty obvious choices which ones you would want to skip, uh, there are a few options you can have throughout the run. Um, we're going to see a few of these runners pick different stages throughout, um, and some of those options are for time saving, and some of those options are for safety. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see which stages we see from which runners. Absolutely. Looking forward to seeing Grand Pooh Bear and his ultimate swag of hammer suit. <laughs> It's the only way to beat this game. Very nice 3T by Alglib. It's very difficult to not reach the water there. Well done. <laughs> so now we're going to see a very iconic enemy in this next stage 3-3. This is Boss Bass. And what happens is it doesn't matter how many power-ups you have. If that fish gets you, you're dead. We have a $20 Great donation movement. from Cold Trooper that says, been waiting all week to donate during the Super Mario race. Go Team Reznor. Hmm. Yeah, that's the appropriate reaction. <laughs> I mean, wrong team, but still nice yeah. to get the money. I would have to respect I do disagree. appreciate the donation. <laughs> Kuru with just great movement. All right, so what Kuru, so, Kuru is going there for a frame perfect um, input there. Yep. You can actually go through the third door, and if you press up on the first frame after going through the door, uh, it takes you to the boom boom fight correctly. Um, it's, you know, whether it's an oversight, a glitch, an Easter egg, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's very difficult to pull off. And I think all three runners have agreed to go for it at least once. I think it loses like seven seconds to go for it in this. It definitely loses time. I will tell you that, yeah. that what I'm seeing so far has not saved time. <laughs> not a fan of the Hammer Brother placement on either of the two players. Um, wow, that was an amazing team, stage. Right, stage Grand Pooh Bear. That was a, incredible. As Sky mentioned earlier, it's very hard to stay out of the water. Uh, that strat's pretty difficult to pull off, and he nailed it. Yeah, that, that level is a really good example of how keeping your P-Speed and going perfectly, the littlest thing can knock you off that. And especially in that level with the giant fish just waiting to swallow you up, it's, uh, the stakes are even higher. All right, so Kuro finally got his Fire Flower back. I just want to point out that he's been playing at this level this whole time without Fire Flower. A lot of the strats in this game are, are, are based around having yeah. your Fire Flower. Um. Ooh. That's close, but the Hammer Brother did stick around so Kura can get to that. You do not want what we call a runaway Hammer Brother. You do not want them to pass by 3-6. Why? 3-6 is an auto-scroller. You do not want to touch that stage. Yeah, and each time that you beat a stage or fight a Hammer Brother, uh, the bridge position swaps, and you very much don't want to end up in a situation in which you finally encounter 3-6, but the um, bridges are not set up for you to be able to skip 3-6 to go directly uh, toward 3-8. For those watching that might not know much about playing this game, can you explain kind of the Hammer Brother RNG that happens on the map? Yeah, so every, every uh, time you exit a stage or, or beat an overworld enemy, uh, they have the opportunity to move. And there are certain rules about how far they're going to move or where they might be willing to stop. Um, but in general, it can make a pretty significant difference um, exactly how far a Hammer Brother moves. In fact, you know, there, there are records for this game that are optimized based on too much Hammer Brother movement can you know, in the run, basically. Absolutely. What Skybills was mentioning before is one of these Hammer Brothers is more or less necessary for this route, and if that hammer goes in the wrong direction uh, and ends up in a section of the overworld map that you don't want to go to, uh, that can be real trouble. Absolutely. It basically would force you to play an extra level that you really don't want to play. So coming up on this third airship nice is actually... Actually, one of the most difficult uh, enemies ever in this game, uh, Wendy, who's actually tougher than Bowser, to be honest. You want to fire kill Wendy because Wendy starts shooting candy rings. Now, all these players will probably fire kill Wendy, which is good. Only one candy ring will stand there. You lose fire, things get a little more interesting. No swag jump for good. Average Guardian donates $1,000. Wow. Saying, I don't think we have enough hype for Team Birdo. Good luck, Pooh. You got this. 
I am required to make a marble meme. So, marbles. Marbles, marbles. Everybody's making a lot of sense to me right now. <laughs> this is all just going right over your head. I'm all about marbles. All right, we got Kuroi here entering the windy fight. The movement's very specific when you watch these runners uh, do these fire kills. You don't want to situate yourself too far away from the um, Koopa Kid because if you're too far away, it takes a long time for your fireballs to hit and despawn so that you can fire more of them. But you don't want to be too close because they're starting to, they're starting to pressure you into the corner, basically. Absolutely. Right here, we've got Glib entering the windy fight. All Glib. So teams Resnor and Boom Boom still within about 20 seconds of each other. Excellent. So Karu is heading into World 4. World 4 notable because of uh, all the large enemies in the stage. This is sort of like a Mario has shrunk down world. Yeah. Such a cool concept when you play this as a kid. Now, it is important to note that uh, Team Boom Boom is a bit more in the lead right now than they appear to be, because remember, Oglib did use his hammer during World 2, so he will have to go through the fortress in the first part of World 4. So in this world, uh, Hammer Brother RNG can make uh, somewhat of a difference. You don't necessarily need to get all of the Hammer Brothers um, but it does help that the Hammer Brother fights in this world are particularly easy. When you enter one, you don't have to deal with two Hammer Brothers or a Boomerang Brother that sort of forces you to move in a particular way. The Hammer Brothers in this one are Sledge Bros, which are just a single large Hammer Brother um, that's particularly easy to kill, to be honest. Uh, of all of the Hammer Brothers, I'd say it's probably one of the more straightforward fights. Um, so while Hammer Brother RNG can definitely make a difference, um, it doesn't... It doesn't hurt you to get extra ones in this quite as much as it does in some of the other worlds. World 4-3, uh, one that um, Karu is in right now. Karu is just showing off his movement. Pretty tough jumps, not going to lie. Karu is showing that he's a little bit of a step above when it comes to movement and yeah. that level. You can just really see what it means to be world record holder there. That is the stage where you first learn how to use P-Speed, though, if you're first starting to learn how to speedrun this game. 4-3 is a great example of the level you're supposed to learn in. So you saw their crew use this hammer to skip having to fight one of the forts. In this, we're going to see the Lakitu bounce. He's going to set up in a very specific way so that he can get on top of the Lakitu and skip mm -hmm. pretty much half of the stage. Yeah. I mean, the stage is more or less done now. Double Lakitu bounce. And Lakitu's dead, so... Yeah. Double win. Excellent movement through that stage. It's sometimes difficult just to look at these and realize how subtle the movement differences are. Absolutely. Um, and just be able to see how uh, small, small things that they're doing are affecting, um, affecting how different enemy patterns allow them to move through the stage more quickly. Crew opted to use his uh, music box right there to skip over the remaining Hammer Brothers. Uh, he knew what he had gotten from the first Hammer Brother and he decided he didn't need what, what the rest of them were holding. Nice for uh, for Fortress One by Oglid. We have a two hundred dollar donation from Anonymous that says, "Go Team Resnor." Hmm. Hmm. I'm not hearing a lot of uh, donations for Team Boom Boom. I'm assuming that people are holding out for the underdogs. I heard their host like. They were just more than a fan of the host. Hmm. The commentator. Okay, yeah, all right. I can, I can take the criticism. They said you were too tall. That was weird. I get that a lot. Yeah. Poo doing the Lakitu jump there as well. Now, there is an item that Glib could have used here. You actually have that music box. Uh, that can be used to skip some Hammer Brothers and some levels later on in World 7, but it's best to use that on the bottom of World 5, so much quicker to kill the Sledge Brother than the two Hammer Brothers.
great movement by Glib through this stage. This is a, uh, it, it's kind of interesting if you watch a lot of Super Mario Brothers versus this game. In Super Mario Brothers, your fireballs move just barely faster than Mario does, which means if you fire a fireball, it always conveniently stays right out in front of you. Whereas in this game, Mario runs considerably faster than his fireballs, so sometimes you'll see the way that they fire, their patterns are firing right as they're about to hit an enemy, so that it's that brief moment where the fireball does actually get to be in front of them, otherwise they just pass it by. The Hammer Brothers are kind of cute when they're asleep. Okay. I mean, you're rooting for the enemy, but that's okay. Yeah. All right, so since we're literally on the longest level of the relay, or up there at least, uh, that would be a good time for donations. No problem. Uh, first, we have a $20 donation from Calico that says, Hey, guys, never gotten to watch a GDQ event live before, let alone donate. Figured I'd do so during one of my favorite game series that was among my first as a gamer. Go Team Boom Boom. Nice. I also got... Lots of people have judgment I issues. also got a $100 donation from Oglip. What? How, what? How, how does this happen? <laughs> Greetings from the World 4 airship. Didn't have... <laughs> 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 Didn't have much else to do right now, so I figured I'd get my donation in. Thank you so much to all my fellow runners and to everyone who helped me put this amazing relay together. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with you all and to help DWB with all the great work they do. Team Resnor. Oglib not only able to keep his own in the speed game, but also able to donate money at the same time. Pretty impressive. I didn't even see him pull out his phone. It's brilliant. It must be Google Glass or something. Probably. Took a selfie in this stage last year. Okay, Google. Donate $100 to Games Done Quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not Google, but uh, I know the Yeti donated $5,000. Saying, hey, uh, Yeti Glenn here. Gotta show my love for Team Birdo. Duh. But also, shout out to Team Boom Boom. Hmm. My daughter Penny is rooting for you. She even made her own sign. After watching these events since 2012, it's so special to be able to share it with my, my daughter. Put this donation towards killing the animals, only to balance the race and the fuzzy pickles run. <laughs> Being a fan of Team Boom Boom and Team Birdo is kind of like being a Red Sox fan and a Yankees fan. I don't think it's acceptable. I don't know. I think you got to pick a lane there. So you saw right at the beginning... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you saw right at the beginning of World 5 that Kuro went ahead and used his whistle. You know, that may have seemed strange. And in a typical Warpless run, obviously you would never do that. Uh, but while it's extremely detrimental to use your whistle at the wrong time, uh, which is always, uh, at the beginning of World 5, it's convenient to just get it out of your inventory. So Kuro made the educated decision that any smart person would do, hmm. which is to go ahead and get that whistle out of their inventory. Looking at both Oglib and Grand Pooh Bear here. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like how you're looking at them. That's fine. We have a $150 donation from Loser141 that says, Let's go, Team Resnor. Let's save those frames, kill those animals, and speedrun raising $1 million. Money to runner's choice. This audience is very diverse. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Algolib already has two stars, but be careful not get a third one. We don't want to see a fresh five up. <laughs> Glib, I think you could use five more lives. Go ahead and get uh, that star if you don't mind. So you see Karua here going through the tower. Um, this tower is used in World 5 to connect the ground level to the sky level. This is a uh, sky world as it is, so... Um, he has to go through this tower forward if he wants to get to the top. Um, you can actually use the tower to come back down to the beginning if you want to, but why would you do that? Food 
Foos Fam donates $1,000. Saying Team Birdo and Poo Nation represent. Poo Nation. Ha- Hammer Suit Kill, let's do this, brother. Great event as always and a great cause. So Karua, the first one to enter uh, the top area of Skyworld, um, with Oglib and Grand Pooh Bear both right behind. This is extremely close. Oglib just used the music box, put a couple Hammer Brothers to sleep. Making sure that he doesn't have to stop at each one of those. Now, he will have another one by the time he gets to World 7, which is going to be used to skip um, Piranha Plant stage at the end. Now, do you want to speak to um, the items you get at the end of the fighting the Hammer Brothers? Are those randomized? No. Mm-mm, no. So they, they have a set. Yeah, you can you can saying. spot which ones on which world uh, as long as you can see them at the beginning. You know which ones holding which, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know it's it's very easy in the fray to lose track of which ones which, especially if they pass one another, for instance. Absolutely. Some of the levels in World Five, it's very difficult to get P speed during them, and it's very difficult to not fall. A lot of gaps in the stages in stage five. We still don't have a death up at this point in the Mario 3 run- race from any of the runners, which is just really kind of shocking. So Kuru losing his Fire Flower there is going to cost him just a few seconds just on the boom boom kill, but honestly, nothing to be worried about. How did Mario get up to these clouds? Using the tower? Hmm. Yeah, respect the lore. Oh. All right, Hammer Brothers in perfect position for Oglid. All that Hammer Brothers carrying is a music box again, which he won't need another one. Uh, Pooh losing Fire Flower there. Unfortunate. All right, Jugum Cloud being used again to skip 5-9, which is actually a diagonal auto-scroller. Haven't seen anything quite like that in other games, but unfortunately we won't get a chance to see that. Sky Bill's rooting for auto-scrollers over here. <laughs> Known lover of auto-scrollers. <laughs> it's on the record. We have a $500 donation from B. Diddy Tampa saying, as always, thank you to everyone involved. Good luck to all the runners. Cheers. And go Team Reznor. Yes. Hmm. They wouldn't even be my third favorite team. Wow, thanks, John. Getting very salty here, it sounds like. <laughs> Very nice. 5 8 is one of the toughest stages to keep P speed throughout. Agua nails it. So, this is Roy. Roy has an earthquake mechanism, which you don't want to be on the ground when Roy lands. Otherwise, it's very easy to get comboed and killed, even with Fire Flower. We have a twenty dollar donation from Muddy Waters that says, "Love me some author blues and sky bills." Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> You're okay though. Like, yeah. We have doses. a small doses. ten dollar donation from Author Blue with no S that says, "Singular <laughs> Author Blue here donating for Team Birdo because I want to see my handsome imposter Author Blues play a bad game of John Carl's choice." <laughs> It's good, man. It's good to have friends. I'm definitely a bigger fan of Author Blue than Author Blues. I'm going to put that out there. Makes sense. Fewer letters. Yeah. A lot easier to spell. I think this airship needs more cannons. Worth noting, not worth as many points in Scrabble, though. Ooh. That double word score really just skyrocketing. So on Kuro's side, at the beginning of World 6, we're using the hammer again. 
skip three stages this time. You can see Karua using his iframes to be able to get over that spike pit, not having to wait for the uh, platform to scroll all the way over there. He's going to be going gonna grab for a star, star kill, yeah. He's going to be trying to keep this star all the way to the uh, Boom Boom fight. Finish him off instantly. Enjoy your upside down orb. Orb! How much of a temptation is it to just goof around when you're in these auto-scrollers? All of the temptation. Yeah. You can lose runs to that. You gotta be careful. Keeping your focus through auto-scrollers like this is actually really uh, difficult to do. So even though he lost a little bit of speed there, that was actually very fortunate for Kurua. Those, um, the spinning platforms there have a tendency to grab a hold of you and sort of throw you straight down to the pit. I have to imagine that's specifically what they were designed for. Oh, nice runaway. Oh, my God. Well, enjoy that. Yeah, as, as mentioned before, uh, you know, Hammer Brothers have very specific rules about where they can move, where they can stop, and how far they want to move. Uh, and that was one of those situations where every single time the Hammer Brother tried to stop, he decided to just keep going. Hmm. Nice iframe boost for Oglet as well. We have a $200 donation from Amy Starr that says, I've always meant to give Doctors Without Borders money when I had some, and now I do. Go Team Boom Boom! Hmm. Team Boom Boom gaining some uh, bandwagon fans here in the audience. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I love you. <laughs> All right. Using, uh, using the, um, the raccoon tail in order to fly through large portions of this castle or fort can save quite a lot of time, and Kuro pulled it off expertly. Pooh going for the star kill and Boom Boom. Runners within about a minute and a half of each other, so still really close still in this overall race. Still extremely close. If you just tuned in, we're still got two and a half games left and really no clear outcome yet. So right here, World 6-5 is actually one of the most unique levels in all of uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 because the exit of this is actually through the top. You need a tail to do this. P-Wings preferred, so you don't have to gather up P-Speed and go through the pipes. Lots of runners being frustrated with the Hammer Brother patterns here. All right, hardest level coming up here on crew outside. I think he's going to need some serious time. All right, no. Awesome Woo. level. That was impressive. Holding right for that long. Good work, bud. So you may think that that uh, hit, hit was accidental, but he really just wants to burn that leaf as early as possible, as I mentioned before. Wow, playing with fire there. Yeah, you really only want the uh, raccoon tail when it is needed and beneficial. If not, it's going to slow you down. So taking the damage there is intentional. I always love the uh, crouched flying in this level. Grand Pooh Bear pulling off a, a, a wonderful fort as well. Uh, this fort can yeah. be very difficult to pull off with the tail, but Absolutely. handled it no problem. Oh, look, it's another auto scroller. Woo! Heard you like auto scrollers. Shout outs to flying boats. We have a $200 donation from the 5 o'clock shadow that says, because I attended grad school with Author Blues, got to go with some Team Boom Boom. Mm. Let's get some Team Boom Boom hype. So this person knows you personally and is rooting for your Kuroa. team. <laughs> well, he knew there was a ground there, but I didn't know there was a ground there. <laughs> Yeah, 
We have another $200 donation from Bird Long that says, Go Team Birdo! Good luck, Pooh! We have a $150 donation from Victory Formation that says, here's to the cause, to Team Boom Boom. Crew grabbing the uh, wand out of the air for swag. Not as good as hammer, hammer suit swag. That's true. Which I think we're getting pretty close to seeing hammer suit swag. I was hoping that Pooh would wear a real hammer suit, but he refused. Glib trying to leave the auto scroller from the left doesn't seem to be working for him, but you know, no, no reason not to try. It doesn't lose any time. All right, so we've got a clip right here at the game of World Seven Seven One. Uh, he's going to be trying to clip right through the corner of this block here without going through the door. Third try. Third That's try. really Excellent. good. That's really good. And that skips the entire stage right there. So <laughs> skipping the stage is really helpful for uh, not spending as much time playing the game. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. It's a good strategy. Who opting not to try and leave the level on the left? He's just accepted his fate. All right, so Karu is going here for a setup. Um, it looks a little strange, but he's he's going for a setup to get P-Speed early on in the stage, which uh, allows him to skip going through a little pipe segment um, to reveal invisible blocks. The nice thing about being small Mario only there is that you can actually land directly on the other pipe. We have an anonymous $200 donation saying, been waiting all week for this race. Go Team Birdo. Marbles, 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 marbles. Put this to naming Pooh's name in Earthbound, Melvin. I get the feeling that you're the person here who understands the least about the marbles thing, and yet you seem more excited than have the you donors. Ever, have you ever watched his stream? Oh, I've watched it. They say marbles a lot. No, I get that. I'm saying you don't understand it. Oh, I understand. <laughs> All right, here comes Oglib 7 one clip. Third try oh. as well. Very okay. impressive. It's not mac and cheese Oglet, but it'll do. <laughs> mac and cheese is the random name that they gave to uh, first try seven one clip. <laughs> we have a two hundred fifty dollar donation from Sahara that says already donated during uh, Twilight Princess, but seeing these guys and girls do a Super Mario inspired me to nice. open nice. my wallet. Good job right there. Go Team Reznar. Money goes to runner's choice. Everybody honestly getting the clip much faster than most people that I watch run this game, so. But you only watch me? Yeah. That was the point. <laughs> And uh, we got a um, $10,000 donation. From uh, Notch himself Ooh. saying, hey guys. It's <laughs> a good message. Here you see uh, Karu going for some clips as well. Uh, there's a whole chain of these clips that you can go for in a row, and uh, they can save a ton of time going through kind of this windy level. Do you want to explain some of the tech behind how you get these clips? Yeah, so you just crouch jump into the corner, um, but what you're looking for is you're looking to actually uh, catch your foot on the, um, 
on, on what we refer to as the wall clip pixel. So every 16 pixels, um, it sort of represents what the game considers maybe ground to stand on. And so if you can manage to jump into the corner while crouching, uh, catching your foot on what we call the wall clip pixel actually allows Mario to stand back up, something he shouldn't be able to do while he's mm -hmm. in midair. And if you can stand up right there, getting his head stuck in the ceiling makes the game start to force him to the right. That's the basic premise. And that pixel is the same pixel you'll see people do uh, wall jumps off of, correct? Correct. So all of the other runners um, that you're going to see here are going to be using their cloud to skip this stage right here. This is the second fortress in World 7. Uh, this is a very common stage to be skipped in, um, in the warpless uh, category just because it's incredibly difficult to pull off and even more difficult to pull off quickly. Um, but Karua is actually going to opt to... Man. Wow, just pulling that level off like it's not even a yeah. challenge. Karua is actually going to opt to instead skip the Fortress in World 8. Now, here's uh, sort of what you need to know about that. Skipping the Fortress in World 8 is a longer stage, so it's a, a calculated choice to save time by doing that. Um, but the alternative uh, result is that now not only did he have to play a more difficult stage, but if he loses his fire over the course of World 8, he's not going to have the option in uh, the fort in 8 to get it back. And that's going to uh, be a problem. Grand Pooh Bear is taking this opportunity to grab his hammer suit. Woo! Big shout outs to hammer suit. Kind of the only way to play the game, if you ask me. We didn't. Oh, you didn't ask me, did you? I didn't. Oh, that's right. Wow. Nice clip spike lib over here. Wow. Oh. oh. <laughs> nice. Nice. Very well done by Glib. Here. He was past the point at no return at that point. Uh, after that clip, he was actually trapped in that segment. So it's not like a lot of the other clips where if you miss it, you can just cancel out and go back and try another path. Uh, he, he was committed at that point. Who getting the first clip? Oh, and the second clip. Oh! At that point, it's just showing off. It's the swag clip. You gotta have that Hammer Brother suit on to do that one. <laughs> there have gotta be rules against showboating. Mm. A lot of bad things about you, Sky. I'm sorry. Well, mostly bad things about Team Resnor, but yeah. I feel like that reflects directly on you as a commentator. Yeah. Oh, cool. Another airship. Another auto scroller. Well, I'm glad that you guys are starting to get tired of auto scrollers because we're heading into World 8. Thankfully, we won't be seeing any more of those. Yeah, I don't think there's even one in World 8, is there? What did these two say about me while I was gone? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're coming off on the eighth uh, world here. Very interesting, very going to make a big difference in the relay, the hand stages. Uh, you can get anywhere between one and three hands, so right after the naval ship, be sure to put in your bets, zero through three. So just explaining the hands a bit more, there's these hands that come up on the map that'll grab the character or not grab them. Each uh, hand that grabs you, you have to do an additional level. So uh, you clearly save a whole lot of time not getting any hands versus having to do multiple additional levels. What are the statistics behind that? Well, Mr. it's, it's uh, I mean, for a task, it's, it's easily manipulated. But uh, for a human, you've got roughly a 50-50 shot of being pulled into each stage. Um, so, I mean, just, just based on the numbers, you're looking at a, a one in eight shot of getting zero hands, a one in eight shot of getting uh, three hands, and a relatively even shot of getting one in two hands. So it's most likely what we're going to see is one or two hands for each person. That's some pretty slick math, man. I did it in my head. Nice. And to reiterate, you have an equal chance of getting zero and three hands. Mm -hmm. We have a $50 donation from Quintopia that says, Good Hammer Brothers, great clips, no hands, get it done. A $50 donation from Freelancer42 that says, Go Team Birdo, 
Also, kill the animals, save the marbles. Gotta save the marbles. This fire flower is going to do a lot of favors for Karua in this world. Um, it's going to allow him to kill the uh, kill the uh, boom booms and kill the uh, boomerang brothers pretty quickly um, throughout the course of this world. Now you may think there's nothing to do in these auto scrollers, but there is a small amount of time being saved with, um, from lag reduction by uh, eliminating certain en- certain enemies um, and making sure that certain explosions happen or cannons do not happen. Yeah, that's a special message just for the Hammer Brothers suit, isn't it? It's because Pooh's a special guy. You yeah, get they... a special message whenever you have a frog suit, a Tanuki suit, or a Hammer Brothers suit. Nice. Yeah, the king king said uh, that he wanted his clothes. <laughs> frog suit's pretty lit as well. Yeah. Not quite as good as the Hammer suit. Not fast, but, no. you know, fresh. It's the closest suit to being a frog that they have in this game, for sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. All right, so while we're on cruise and here in the naval ship, be sure again, in your chat, one, two, or three hands for Kura. Maybe we might see the fabled zero. We'll see. What's the winning prize, Sky? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's maybe worth noting really quickly that um, Crew is actually slightly further ahead than it seems. He's one full auto scroller ahead, but in addition to that, uh, he is going to have the opportunity to cloud uh, the fortress in World Eight yeah. as well, which is um, definitely a longer fortress. So he's he's got a little bit of a lead. Um, just just talking pure numbers. Uh, Grand Pooh Bear with the Hammer Brothers suit will be able to get a slightly faster kill on Bowser, but just in general, um, Fire and, and Hammer are going to be roughly the same yeah. in terms of time. Saves about two seconds overall, but it adds about ten points of swag, I think, approximately. Definitely. Yeah. Moment of truth. Oh. Almost. So close. Who disappointed by the lack of three hands for Karua. <laughs> one still isn't too bad, though. If you are going to get one hand, though, the middle hand is actually the one you want to get. It is the shortest of the three hands. Well, at least it wasn't the first one. Oh, look, another autobus scroller. I mean, honestly, now would be a great time for just a few donations. No problem. We have a $75 donation from Matthew that says, Hi, Phoenix. Go Team Birdo. Good choice. We have a $50 donation from the Nerd Wonder that says, This is the strangest Sonic the Hedgehog race I've ever seen. <laughs> $20 from Anonymous that says, Go Team Everybody. Oh, Karua oh. dying on the auto scroller. So, uh, he's actually very fortunate that he did get the last hand uh, in hindsight because all, uh, otherwise he would have actually gone back to the pipe, which meant he would have had to try for all three hands again. Wow. So while previously we said that the middle hand would have been the best one for him to get, really glad that he got the last hand. Yeah. You definitely don't want to do the hands twice. Speaking of the middle hand, that is the one that Oglip happened to get. Hopefully we don't see the last one again. I think Glib might get four hands, actually. I'm actually really interested to see what Karua's strats are going to be, because as I mentioned before, um, he's not going to have the easy access to fire that you would typically have in uh, the Fortress in 8, so... Will he still be able to get fire for uh, killing uh, Bowser? I'm not sure, actually. Do you know whether or not he's going to have access to fire anywhere else, really? He will have access to fire, but it depends on whether or not he plans on skipping the fortress. Well, he has the cloud for it. It would certainly save more time to skip the fortress. Mm -hmm. So the answer is no, then. Yeah, the, and the, bow, the Bowser kill will take a significantly longer time uh, without Fire Flower. I think it's probably going to normalize a lot of this gap. Absolutely. So Oglib really getting the best case scenario here of our three runners. Only got the middle hand. If you really wanted to troll the runners, uh, if somebody's asking you how many hands did somebody get, if you say four, you're not a nice person. Who got two hands, so getting the 
uh, front of the RNG here. However, he is still an incredibly good-looking guy, so... Oh. So he chose instead to cloud 8-2 and say he's going to do the fortress. As we said before, being able to react to circumstances you don't normally continue runs in on is a really difficult thing to do in a marathon race and crew, kind of just showing his overall Mario knowledge right here um, by knowing immediately what he wanted to do um, to be able to get the Bowser quick kill. I feel like to a certain extent this was an obvious choice, but I completely overlooked the option to just cloud a different stage. Yeah. It is important to note, though, that the fortress is substantially longer than 8-2, though. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a costly error on the auto scroller, but something that's just going to normalize the race in general. I think yeah. Team Boom Boom probably still in the slight lead right now. We'll get our second visit from the Angry Sun here. That being of my childhood right there. One thing that is interesting with the Hammer Suit Strat is that in that level, Grand Pooh Bear will actually be able to kill the Sun, and it'll make that level incredibly less uh, stressful for him. I'm excited to see Grand Pooh Bear make the Bowser without Hammer Suit. Oh, me too. So, Oglid still has his Fire Flower. No worries here. And Karua just showing what all speedrunners do during the very last auto scroller. It's, it's enough already. We're done with this. Wow, that was some really clean movement. Great work from Grand Pooh Bear over there. Pooh Bear just showing he's not just a pretty face. He's got moves. He's got skills. Yeah. So Grand Pooh Bear forgot to activate the star going into this level, which would normally help him run through these rings. So he's going to lose a little bit of time. Um, he's, he's making the smart decision to just take it a little bit safe. That's really yeah. all you can ask for in that situation. And by this point, the star would have run out, so you know it, it yeah. only affected him in that first room. Yeah. Author Blue's compliment made him blush just too hard. Made him weak in the knees. Ugly. Wow, nice. Nice clip by Karua. So Karua got that clip. Uh, he's going to be doing one more clip here. This clip is definitely the easiest one in the game. It's pretty easy to pull off. It's called the Everyman clip because every man can do it. Just crouch and jump up in that corner, and you will clip through the wall. Nice hitbox, Bowser. Great one. Great time by Karua. Still keeping Team Boom Boom in the I lead. Mean, honestly, Karua really clutched up the end of that run. Absolutely. I mean, Being able to recover from dying in that auto-scroller, um, knowing how to adjust his strats to be able to pick an additional level, a different level to uh, pass over and where to find Fire Flower, just showing the kind of expertise he has in the game, not just knowing his own route and what the world record strats are, but knowing the He's game good. well enough to adjust, especially in a uh, marathon race like this. That, that can be really important. Really mitigating that mistake the most that he possibly could. No clip for Oglib there, but really didn't lose him much time, so... No big deal. Gets the every clip. Excuse me, young man. Are you supposed to be up here? Young boy? <laughs> We're gonna see some more of a demonstration of Bowser's. That's a good hitbox. Nice by your cow dog, Lib. Oh, nice clip by Pooh. Real showcase of talent. I think, I think. Oh, the, oh no! The hammer suit. Pooh says he's sorry, just so you guys know. That's such an easy mistake to make as well. It's so difficult to make it up those stairs at full speed. And all it takes, all it takes is hopping off one of those steps. 
So this Bowser kill will take a bit longer. But at least he can sit inside his sprite, which is a cool thing to show off. Team Boom Boom getting started on lost levels. All right, so Riker Ryder is right now picking up off of this one. So, important thing to note here, version differences right off of that. Riker Ryder has chosen to go with lost levels on the Super Nintendo. Meanwhile, Supersonic is going to be using the FDS version. And also, awesome finish by nice Pooh. Nice job by Pooh. Give him a hand. Nice jump there by Ryko Ryder. Keep in mind that with the weirder hitboxes with these piranha plants, he's really having to deal with making sure that he doesn't come anywhere near them. That's pretty much his penalty for playing on the SNES version, which has a lot of nice features in a lot of other ways, but you know he has to deal with these differences in hitboxes. You're going to see a lot of those differences play out as you watch uh, the Supersonic over there playing, uh, playing on the Famicom Disk System version, the FDS version. Darbian wanted me to make it clear that this game moves at the speed of molasses, and this is the slow version, so... Okay. Is that why he's playing this version? I don't know, yeah. I is he, he trying just... to give himself a handicap? Yeah, I think so. so. A lot of people know Darby, and he's a young boy, but somewhere between the ages of 14 and 40 years old. Um, generally powered by the strength of chocolate milk. He has a couple of Mario World Records, and I'm um, pretty sure he's just going to bring uh, Team Birdo right back to uh, the lead here. Now, you'll notice in Lost Levels, you actually get two options when you begin the game. You can play as Mario or as Luigi. And there's actually a, quite a difference between these two characters. So Mario doesn't have as great of a jump, but Mario can stop on a dime. Luigi, amazing jump. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see him. But Luigi skids as if he's on ice. So all three players using Mario for good reason. You don't have to adjust to different controls. So makes sense. And if you're curious while we're playing this now, we, um, we're playing these in the U.S. release order. So um, we just played through the three NES versions. No? No, it's not necessarily for... Uh it's, well, it's also not for, for release console order. switches. Yeah, this uh, this game order may seem a little strange, but it was actually optimized for console switches. Oh, okay, so each sorry. each team is only uh, switching consoles primarily one time. Oh. That's a really tough jump to pull off. That's true because SMW did come out before this. Anyway, so. I've been showing even 1-1 one, one in Lost Levels, not a trivial level. Honestly, the first world of this game is really difficult. <clears throat> There's a lot of precise platforming in 1-1 one, one, and uh, some tight windows for those jumps. And unfortunately, just clipping into one of those uh, piranha plants. So Ryko Ryder is going to be playing this run uh, Small Mario. Darbian's going to be playing this Fire Mario. And uh, Supersonic's going to be playing this Small Fire. So we're really seeing the same breakdown in strats Absolutely. that we saw with SMB1. Uh, not really for... For any particular reason, there was no agreement in advance to show off the strats. It just kind of worked out that yeah. way. And this race for um, for Lost Levels is going to be through 8-4, so they will not be going through the A1 through D4 stages. So um, just straight through 8-4. If they did want to go through the letter levels, uh, they would all have to be playing on the Super Nintendo version. On yep. the Famicom version, you have to beat the game so many times to grant themselves access to the letter levels. So, yep. through eight four only. Oh, good recovery. It's okay, I think he's just going to take the backup. Yeah, getting momentum to get up there is incredibly difficult. Yeah, it's a it's a real challenge to um, actually make use of your momentum properly and time it out Absolutely. with the pattern of the. Um, piranha plants. Um, you saw there, uh, just worth noting at least one time, um, that, that Raiko and you just saw Darby and do it as well, um, they're backwards jumping into the flagpoles and the reason for that is, as mentioned before, um, you know, you, you accelerate faster coming off of the top of the flagpole, but in addition to that, you don't have to watch Mario flip to the other side. Um, if they back jump into the flagpole, it, it totally skips that part, so it's a little bit faster. So here, a little bit of difference. Here's where Darby is grabbing his fire flower. So you just saw Supersonic pick up a 1-up towards the end of 2-1. The reasoning for that is, if Supersonic game's over, he does have to begin at the beginning of the previous world. Unlike the Super Nintendo version, much more forgiving, you get to begin at the beginning of that world. Nice fire kill from Darby in there, using the platform to uh, kind of set himself up to get the fireballs. The fireball kills are kind of strange in how they work with Bowser. Uh, he actually has two hitboxes, so it can take 
I think as little as three fireballs and as many as five fireballs to kill him. So to react and get meet this uh, correct frame rule in real like world record attempts is kind of uh, difficult to uh, maintain. Nice, nice backup strategy by Supersonic. So fireworks work a bit differently in lost levels. Be sure that the last digit of your coins does not match the last digit of your time, otherwise you're going to get fireworks. Very different from uh, Super Mario Brothers 1. Yeah, this race isn't even close to over if you really consider it. I mean, just the just the, the spread in the PBs between these through, uh, three and with how consistent a runner like Darbian tends to be, um, you know, you're looking at, you're looking at uh, the PB breakdown for these three runners actually being in the reverse order of the placement in this run right now. So yeah. uh, Darby and definitely being one of the more consistent runners, yeah. uh, pulling up third place and being able to close the gap uh, with uh, Ryan and uh, Raiko. We have a $200 donation from Anonymous that says, Thanks for a great week of entertainment, guys. Extra kudos to the excellent couch commentators who make every run more interesting. You're welcome. Supersonic making it through 2-4. Quite out of his element right now, but very much still doing a good job. Uh, Team Birdo only one level behind Team Rezo now, so the gap's starting to shorten. Definitely. Darby missing the clip there in 2-4, but only saves a couple frame rolls. Solid far fire kill, Bowser by Darby. So in 3-1, we are introduced to the springboard, not going to use it, but the green springboard allows Mario to hover over parts of the stage. We're going to see this more prevalent in World 7-3, but this is the first place where we would see it in the game. Also, if you are playing this game casually, do not go down any random pipes. There are various, various warps that take you back to level one. <laughs> Darby, and unfortunately losing uh, Fire Flower there, he's going to have to pick up uh, power-ups coming up. You know what level he'll be able to be get his uh, power back up? I'm not sure. I, there's a, There are plenty of uh, power-ups throughout this run that I think he'll be able to grab them from, but I think he's probably going to be frustrated to have to really slow down in uh, any of them. Karua taking a death on 3-4 on the fire bar there. Um, the gap between all three teams just getting closer and closer now. Okay, out of the water level, which is good. Nice three four Bowser. That Potabo makes things just aggravating in that level. Good job. Raiko moving into four one. Each team one level apart. Four games in. <laughs> it just keeps getting closer and closer. Yeah. You know, a lot of times with these races, there's a real risk for one team to just pull pretty far ahead, especially with the, you know, three hours of straight platforming. Um, you know, one team kind of having a rough run can, can do that. But this has stayed really tight almost the entire time. Absolutely. I think of all of the games that we've uh, seen so far, the, the, the game that's had runners with the closest... Uh, spread in PBs has actually been Super Mario World. You know, we're getting into Super Mario World. Yeah. Um, and if this this game keeps closing the gap quite as much as it is, Absolutely. Uh, I think Super Mario World is going to really be exciting to watch. Yeah, there was some concern uh, with Super Mario World, everybody's PBs just being so close that as the finale, maybe, uh, you know, <clears throat> whatever they, uh, the runners order entered in would stay, but it seems like that probably not going to be the case in this situation, which is really great to see. No, absolutely not.
Darvian taking advantage of a trick there where if you're getting a mushroom, you're able to... Um, if you if you jump uh, right as you get the mushroom, you're able to do like an additional jump, jump getting the power up, which can help you meet higher up uh, platforms and stuff. Having to go with the standard axe kill there since he uh, still doesn't have the fire flower back yet. Darvian and Supersonic, very close. Um. That's a really tough jump to pull off, small. Unfortunately, Darby, though, your princess is in another castle, so probably going to have to keep going on. Oh, and Darby and losing mushroom. Now, coming up in 4-4 four, four, on Raikou's side, there's a very risky jump at the end of the level. You have a one of three chance of getting a really bad fireball, so hopefully RNG will be in all our players' favors. I think that little slowdown he went for uh, was actually to offset the fireball pattern. It did. <laughs> really well done. And I think that was a really smart choice to make. Obviously, you lose a little bit of time slowing down like that, but for the sake of consistency in a run like this, I think that was a really clever choice to actually slow down just a little bit so that fireball pattern uh, didn't hit him right when he was over that platform. Absolutely. That's a real danger for that castle. That was actually not the bad fireball. The bad fireball is the one that hits you, that just right glazes at, right over at the top. Level. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're wondering why uh, there haven't been as many really popular ROM hacks of the original Super Mario Bros. 1, that's because Nintendo made one, and it's this game. Uh, a lot of us didn't get this for a long time in the U.S. because uh, they didn't think that the U.S. market would be very interested in how difficult it is. Um, so we didn't get it until this Lost Levels release. Um, I recommend trying it out, though, if you've never played it, because it is a ton of fun, and if you play on the All-Stars version, it's, it's actually pretty forgiving. Um, you can just keep continuing from the level you left off on, which is really nice. Darby and back to full power up. Oh. It's alright, Supersonic had the power up. Well done still. 4-4 four, four is a very difficult level. You can see how difficult it is to maintain your power ups in this game. The plumber just not clicking for a uh, Darby in there through the wall. You see some Darby and swag with that that uh, crouch there. So here in five one, you will see the wind. Very unique element to Super Mario Brothers Two J. We're going to see it more and more again in 7-3, combined with the green springboards. Yeah, it's designed in, a, in such a way where um, it can be useful to, to span longer gaps. But one of the issues with the wind is it always seems to appear at inconvenient spots. So a lot of times you'll be climbing up a staircase in order to make a precarious jump, and the wind, it, it doesn't activate randomly or on a timer or anything like that, but it activates based on your position in the stage, and uh, that can be really challenging. Darvian taking an unfortunate death in 5-1 uh, here, so back down to no power-ups. Uh, you can just kind of see how difficult this run is with uh, just so many um, of these runners struggling with keeping their power-ups or, or dying. It's, it's a really difficult, uh, precise run. Heavy resets um, when you're actually doing attempts and it's shown why. Yeah, it's strange. At times you think that the stakes are a lot higher by choosing to play Small Mario in games like this. Um, and, and they can be um, because you, you gain the sort of consistency of being able to afford to lose a power-up rather than lose a life. Um, but a really well-practiced Small Mario runner, um, it tends to be the case that if you're not stopping for power-ups and you already have a plan for what to do Small Mario at all times, uh, it can make it a lot easier to sort of work your way through levels. 5-1 Darby and N Supersonic both uh, missing the uh, turtle jump. Uh, if you are able to jump and hit that turtle um, with the right momentum, you can actually uh, skip all the way up there and not have to uh, hit those blocks and do a manual climb to get to the flagpole. Supersonic performed a pair of tricks in the past stage 5-2, clipping through the pipe to get both power-ups and then at the end of the stage to access the end of the stage a bit easier. Well done on clipping the pipe. And it's only available in the FDS version. 
Darby and back to full power up supersonic staying as small Mario right now. Oh, and right there was a great example of what I was talking about before. The wind activates at a really inconvenient time. You really want to be able to land on the top block of that staircase, but if you're not prepared for that that wind or it just catches you in the wrong way, it's so easy to just jump right into the drink. Again, as Author Blues was saying, um, the amount of recovery needed, though, if you're used to small Mario strats, being able to stick with that, and Supersonic taking a death on 5-4 as well. This stage here, 5-3, is uh, reminiscent of the puzzle castles from the first game. Those puzzle castles do reappear in this game, um, but they also, uh, the, puzzle ca the, the puzzle castles sort of reappear as stages like 5-3, um, where you have to figure out how it wants you to exit a room, um, otherwise the room just continues to loop. In that case, it happened to be a pipe that was just, uh, seems barely out of reach. 5-4 is one of those levels. It's much mm. easier to speedrun it than to play it casually. Darby getting hit by the Potaboo, unfortunately, in 5-4, going back to small Mario again. Just really having a hard time holding on to that fire power up, unfortunately. But still alive. Riker Rider seems to be on the right end of the strats right now by using small Mario. Wow. Only. Yeah. What a clean pipe clip from Ryan over there. Similar to like Link to the Past, not having that backup of having um, you know, the Fire Flower can, can make you prepared in any situation. You're used to running through each level as Small Mario, whereas if you're, you're um, used to running through with Fire Mario and you have to do several levels in a marathon like this as Small Mario, it can be a tough adjustment. Definitely. Now these are very similar stages to the, um, the Cheap Cheap Bridges that we saw earlier um, in Super Mario Bros. 1. Nice recovery. Well done, Ryko. Great recovery. Great recovery. Great way out of a traffic jam. Very nice, Ryko. Good job. You get the same cheap, cheap spawners uh, in these levels as you do in the Super Mario Brothers 1 uh, cheap, cheap uh, bridges, but the platforms are placed in really precarious ways that make it very difficult to make your way through them at full speed. 6-4 right here, second puzzle castle of the game. This is an interesting puzzle castle because often uh, new players will ask, well, you know, wh what's the route through this castle? And the joke is always, you just pick whichever pathway you would never want to go because it's always the worst path through this. A nice feature of the All-Stars on the Super Nintendo is if you get the puzzle right, you get this nice little chime sound. Yeah, that's nice and that. helpful. <laughs> you don't get that on FTS. First try, 6-4. That's an extremely challenging stage, and all it takes is losing focus for a moment to end up running into one of the really long fire bars or something like that, and that was an excellent display. Yeah, Team Boom Boom holding on to their lead here. Lots of different stuff going on with all, all three runners kind of struggling, keeping power-ups or, or dying a few times. But, I mean, all but told, we're still seeing told, yeah. runners that are only two stages apart in the extreme. Yeah. Nobody really pulling ahead through this uh, Lost Levels run. That star is a pretty good choice in this stage, especially with, uh, at this point in the game, the Hammer Brothers now, not only are they obnoxious and stand right in your way, but now as soon as they spawn, they start charging at you. Um, if you weren't terrified of Hammer Brothers before, you should be now. Darby and getting through the Cheap Cheap level, uh, it's kind of difficult getting your power-ups back in that level because the Cheap Cheaps are just coming at you from all angles, so good job pulling that off and, and leaving as big uh, Fire Mario. scariest fireball in the bar in the world there. Nice 6-4 for Supersonic. Oh, Darbian just went for a very difficult jump to pull off there. You have to land pretty far on the right of the moving platform, and you have to jump pretty late to make it all the way across the gap. Hey, Auth, what does a uh, ghost made of fire say? What does a ghost made of fire say? Hodaboo. Nope. Another pipe clip by Super Sonic. Just tremendous, tremendous pipe clips tonight. 
7-3 is definitely a difficult level casually. The momentum for handling this wind and these springs is incredibly difficult. And um, to optimally do it, you really have to hit the springboard on the far right of uh, its hitbox in order to get to the right cycle. Probably wise for all of these runners to not go for uh, optimal cycles in this just due to the risk that it uh, caught would cost them if they miss it. That's some optimal cycles in 7-3 for Riker. Good job. Supersonic taking a death on 7-2. And Riker That's very on tough to pull off. He Kaiser wanted, blocked. He wanted that mushroom. Uh, the stage can be extremely tough at the end. Uh, he wanted that mushroom, but grabbing it with the fire bar pressuring you like mm. that is really tough. Oh, I actually think that he's going for a much earlier jump. Okay, I see now. With the death, uh, Team uh, Birdo pulling past Team Resnor here, still really close. All three runners in World 7. Darby going through 7 3 now. Michael still in the lead. Okay, he made the right choice. He slowed down there. If he had fallen down that pit, he was going to have to wait for the uh, Buzzy Beetles to catch up to him in line so that he could have cleared them out. Knowing his team's in the league, too, taking a little precaution, not always a bad idea, no, obviously. No, definitely not. So this is a really difficult part right here, uh, dealing with the Hammer Bowser combined with the Fire Bar in the worst possible spot. Uh, definitely its own challenge. The young boy dying on uh, level 7-3, I think um, everybody kind of struggling with this World 7, unfortunately. Nobody able to pull ahead. Raiko kind of keeping a clean head, has just kept his team in the lead. One and eight four, probably two of the more difficult stages in this run. Eight one can be uh, extremely challenging. Um, this game really tests your understanding of a lot of things in this game. Looks like he's going to play it safe right here with this hammer brother, and I do not blame him one bit. Yeah, lost levels really taking advantage of you needing to know the momentum physics very well to even beat it casually. Uh, lots of different blocks or different jumps that you really need to know how to control Mario properly to do, or Luigi if you choose to do that. <clears throat> Good job, uh, Raiko, finishing up eight one there. Yeah, so he he's gonna pick up uh, he's gonna pick up some fire uh, some fireworks right here. So the the difference between um, lost levels and Super Mario Brothers one is in lost levels you actually get fireworks if the last number on your timer matches the last number of your coin counter. Yeah. So it, it makes it more difficult to skip fireworks. In, in Mario 1, you only have to look at uh, the timer, but in uh, Lost Levels, you have to keep track of your coin count, and you have to know when you're grabbing coins, when you're not grabbing coins. Um, accidentally grabbing coins can kind of make you have to think, oh, Darby and missing the jump off of the, uh, the turtle shell there in 8-1. I always take for granted how much easier these jumps are for Luigi in 8-1. Oh, nice clip by Darbian. So that right there is just showing off uh, some of the weird physics of this game. Um, in, in most of the Mario Brothers games, I would say, but definitely in 1 and 2J, um, you have to deal with this situation where if Mario is moving up or not moving in any direction and he touches an enemy, uh, the enemy wins. So Mario is going to take damage or die. Whereas if Mario is moving down at all, uh, he pretty much wins every exchange, which is why you see a lot of times here um, the runners will jump at an enemy. And even though... Super Sonic wow. continuing with the swag straps. Gotta love the Koopa shell at the bottom of that pit, just kind of hanging out there. All right, Ryko's nice job by Darby in there. Ryko's cleaning up this run with a, a solid 8-4. Ryko doing a really good job of staying cool when things started to unravel for a bit there and uh, play it a little bit safe, keep his team in the lead and um, really just, uh, you know, uh, 
take advantage of some of the mistakes that uh, Team Reznor and Berto have been making. Did a really good job there, setting up his team to, to be in the lead going into the last game. It's Every really room in this castle tests you, and it, it's easy to take for granted. You know, a lot of these runners have been playing this game for a while, uh, playing these games for a while, but sometimes some things just don't get much easier, and this castle is one of them. This castle is, is tough the first day you play it, and it's tough the last day you play it. Darby and slowing down to make sure that the time and his coins didn't match there. Almost got some fireworks, but avoided it. So there we see Bowser. And also here we see Bowser. Yeah. The Bowser brothers. And there we go. Nice That's job by Ryko. Oh, wonderful run by Ryko Ryder. Great run. Personally feeling the sweat of you possibly picking a speed game for me right now. You probably should be. I'm feeling the pressure. There was a $50 donation from Anikos that actually said, best of luck to Ryko Ryder for the lost levels. Obviously, Woo! he did a fantastic job. So Absolutely. Oh, there's the clip in 8-4. That's it. This is going to be very close going into the final game. I mean, Absolutely. having both runners at the end of 8-4 before Team Boom Boom has even entered Super Mario World, this is extremely close. Yep. And Darian finishes. That means we have a one-minute gap between the first place and the last place yeah. team right now. That Absolutely. is so incredibly tight. Absolutely. Any mistakes done in Super Mario World can... Definitely switch first I mean, place to third about, and vice versa. When we talk about the variance between PBs in this category, I think the difference between the best and the worst runner in this on stage right now is less than 20 seconds. We're talking like 15 seconds. Absolutely. And the time loss that you can lose from some of these strats, some of the some of the harder, more difficult stuff, you're talking easily a minute. Yeah. So that that's easily the difference between the first place and yeah. the last place team right now. It would not be a shock for first place to go to third or vice versa. This is really coming down to this game here, and it's going to be awesome to see. Now, one thing that I mentioned at the beginning of Lost Levels is that in Lost Levels, we actually were in an interesting position where our best runner was in third place and our second best runner was in second, and our third best runner was in first place yeah. at the time. Um, and it's kind of interesting because we're seeing something very similar here. Truman does have the best PB, um, but Dots is easily the most consistent runner and more likely to end up playing near his PB uh, than the other threes. And so we actually are seeing a very similar thing uh, entering Super Mario World. So, Oth, which levels do you think are going to make the biggest difference heading into this final part of the relay? Well, I have some early insight into what strats these guys are going to be using that I'm not going to Wait, who's your source? Them themselves. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're on the inside. When I say inside source, I literally mean inside wow. source. Um, so, the, I know what strats these guys are going to be using. There's a few stages throughout this run um, that are going to make the difference, but uh, I think that this is going to be extremely close. Uh, all of these runners... Um, are really some of the best of this game. Now, one thing that I do want to point out before we start this run, for anyone who's familiar with Super Mario World, there's two main warpless categories in this game. There's no Star World, which is the conventional warpless category, but it's not a particularly, uh, it's not a particularly enjoyable run, either to run or to watch. So these runners have all chosen to do all castles, which is a much more interesting run, and I think really more in the spirit of what this 2D warpless relay is all about, which is, you know, beating every single, you know, world and beating Absolutely. every single boss, so... Um, we're going to be seeing that. Nobody having any issues with uh, YI3 uh, box jump there. It yeah, um, can be really tough for new runners, but it's really easy to learn. And, um, you know, these guys have done it literally tens of thousands of times. So. Yeah, the, the first world of this game uh, goes the same in every single category. So these runners combined probably have tens of thousands of yeah. attempts just on these stages. <clears throat> Part of the reason why All Castles was chosen is, quite frankly, we've seen enough auto-scrollers. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty much, I think, cutting out every single auto-scroller in the run. Mm -hmm. I can't... Well, unless you want to count Simon Bar, but well, Simon Bar I say that as we're sitting in an auto-scroller, so I instantly take it back. Oh, well, this one's very okay, short bud. compared to uh, Butterbridge 1, which is, what, about two minutes or so? Yeah, it's a minute 20 seconds, a minute 30 seconds. 
Truman obviously wearing the freshest hat of the group. But I, mean, I think Aaron easily has the freshest face of them. Wow. So what does that give dots? It's not very nice. He's got nice glasses. He's got nice glasses. So yeah, speaking of skipping auto-scrollers, um, we are not going to be going through Donut Planes 2, which is a good thing. Very long auto-scroller. Uh, well, instead, we'll be going through Donut Secret 1, the water level, just straight up and then to the right. Yeah, so these runners are going to be taking um, the you know, normal All Castles or No Star World route through uh, World 2. Now, I mentioned the difference in the categories. So uh, No Star World is a category that's not required to get all of the castles. It's just trying to get to Bowser as quickly as possible without taking the Star Road, which um, people who've played this game or watched this game are probably very familiar with what Star Road is. It's a warp zone that allows you access to a lot of other worlds, and it can warp you straight to Bowser's Castle. So Truman grabbing the uh, cape here. The cape is really the thing that breaks open uh, SMW as a speed game. Why don't you give us a little of insight into kind of how that tech works? So uh, efficient caping is actually quite challenging, and it's a lot harder than it looks. There's, um, it's not just a matter of tapping left, which is really uh, the reputation of this game gets, but um, every time you press right on the controller, uh, Mario's speed oscillates. There's, I, I don't have a good explanation for why his speed oscillates, but oscillates between a lot of different values. And so what these runners are doing are looking for very specific visual cues on screen to try to figure out whether or not they have the fastest possible flight speed. And when I say the fastest possible flight speed, I'm talking about the difference of sub-pixels per, per frame. You know, yeah. it's a very, very small amount. But over the course of a longer run, especially a 96 exit run, it can add up. I don't think that will probably make much of a difference here in this I race. I don't think so. With the number of uh, stages that they will actually end up flying over in this category, I think it will probably only make the difference of, you know, 10 seconds between someone who's not paying attention to it and someone who is. But yeah. it should be very small. So, uh, and Truman's on here. He's carrying a P switch swimming through the stage. Much quicker to go through a water stage when holding an item. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for whatever reason, I, I don't understand the physics of it, but for some reason, holding an item makes him swim faster. Holding an item is actually going to play a bit of a role uh, in Forest of Illusion 2, where the item you're going to pick up very carefully need to grab that, otherwise it's a major time loss. We'll talk about that later, though. It's amazing Definitely. how close this race is overall. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so close. So after this ghost house, uh, just focusing on Truman for a moment, right after this ghost house, we're going to have two quick levels that are uh, flyovers, not too painful, um, not too big of a variance between different runners. Uh, but right after that, we're going to see probably one of the more technical early levels in the game, which is Morton's Castle. Morton's Castle can be a huge difference uh, between skilled and unskilled runners. And even really skilled runners, it's very easy to make small mistakes that will lose you quite a lot of time in that castle. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what strats these guys choose and how well they're able to execute them. Absolutely. In Morton's Castle, there's some moving... Pl uh the walls move in and out, and essentially, if you don't hit the proper cycle, you're going to be losing how much time? 15 seconds? Yeah, every single cycle that you lose in Morton's Castle can make a difference of up to 17 seconds. Yeah. Dot's getting 40 stars of shame there. So every time you go through the end of the level, unless it's a castle or a ghost house, you're going to pass through a gate. Now, if you hit the pole on the gate, you're going to get so many stars according to where you hit it. You do not want to get 100 bonus stars, because otherwise you enter a very slow bonus game. Definitely. Um, you, you notice one issue right there with Dots. Uh, he was trying to go through that door. Uh, doors are a little bit um, fickle in Super Mario World. If you're running at full speed, it's a three-frame input to put in a door input. So you'll see runners sometimes either slow down early uh, or just you know miss it entirely. Um, it's very difficult to pull off. Right here, uh, Truman's going to be picking up a Yoshi uh, for a very specific reason coming up. Uh, there's going to be a glitch that he's going to perform in the very first stage of the next world, and that's going to allow him to save quite a lot of time. 263 for Aaron. That means he had the fastest flight speed possible coming out of Donut Planes 3. You could see Aaron like just clearly staring at the screen, looking at the backgrounds, trying to make sure he could set his uh, flight speed just as And Dot's just also right getting now. a 263. You can tell that these runners really know what they're doing when it comes to uh, obtaining the fastest flight speed. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, visually, it's hard to tell the difference, uh, but these runners have been doing it for a long time. As somebody who's casually run this game a bit, I, I don't even know how they see it, but it's it's an acquired skill for sure. Here we see Truman doing Morton fly. He's doing these spin flies and has to meet this exact cycle. He's also trying to get this spring bear board all the way up to the top of the fort, and looks like he uh, did everything pretty much fine there. 
Springboard's a good idea because with the absence of the green switch, you have to perform a one tile fly. <coughs> Not fun. Great job. That was a great Morton. Morton's Castle. A great, great Morton's Castle. And we're going to see Aaron and Dots both get an opportunity to go in there while we watch Truman get this cutscene. Um, I, I expect to see mostly the same. While yep. Dots and Truman, uh, or while Dots and Aaron show us exactly what we just saw, I do want to take just a quick moment because there's a big glitch that's about to happen. So I want to explain what it is. Um, you can you can use uh, Yoshi wings to end a level early in stages that they're available in. But they're not available in very many stages, and so one option is you can duplicate blocks in a very specific way to glitch the game into giving you Yoshi wings that aren't meant to be there. So what you're going to see these runners doing, and I have to explain it fast because it's about to happen faster than you can tell, uh, you're going to see... Oh! Aaron dying at the top of Morton. That's a very costly death. So you're going to see two quick block duplications that happen. That's going to allow uh, one of the blocks to change its properties in order to have uh, Yoshi wings inside them. All right, so the first step is that. He needs to grab the Yoshi coin, and now there's a glitched block there. He needs to duplicate it. Yes? No? I'm scared. Okay. There are the wings. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he actually not, managed to get them. Not as smooth as he'd like, but still saving time considerably overall going through the actual intended uh, path through that stage. Yeah, between doing the rest of the stage and the 10 seconds of fanfare that you get any time you go through an exit gate, uh, that can save about, I think, 40 seconds. Dots coming up here on the same trick. So Truman's trying to hold on to the shell. It's very easy to accidentally run the shell into an enemy and just kill them instantly. Um, he's trying to drop the shell in front of him uh, in order to kill an enemy and then use that sh and re-grab that shell by spinning it. Dot's catching up a bit of time getting that, that was a considerably really quicker than that was uh, Truman did. His just time on the clock grabbing those wings were 371. That's really excellent work. Yeah, just decreasing that gap even more between the two teams. And Aaron coming up on the same level in a moment. The death in Morton's obviously cost him a, a, a pretty decent amount of time, but he's got his cape back. Um, he had to backtrack a bit and go get back to get a cape because of some of the strats in these levels. Yeah, there's definitely still a lot of room for position change. Definitely. We have a $200 donation from Bucket of Beef that says, <laughs> Go Team Boom Boom. <laughs> Dodge just managed to pull off a, a technique there called Sticky Fly. Um, if you pull up right against the ceiling in just the right way, uh, you can actually, Mario will stick to it across the entirety of the ceiling. What's the swag rating on that trick? Not very high. No? Okay. Just keep us posted on Six that. Six out of oh, mm, That's not bad. It's better than average. Yeah. All right, so there are a lot of options that Truman has right now. You know, he has a little bit of a lead, so he can really choose what strats he wants to use in the stage. Three, seven, four wins for Aaron. Very nice. So he got the initial flight. Getting that flight speed there uh, actually can be very challenging, so impressive that he pulled it off. But now he has to make the choice. There's a variety of methods he can use to get through the next section with the raft. Uh, he's going to pick up Yoshi, uh, but what he does with it, I have no idea. Dot's looking over, trying to see what... Uh, oh, I know what he's what, doing with it. <clears throat> what happens to Truman so that he can kind of react with his own strats. And he's doing the raft skip. Oh! oh! Wow. What was the swag level on that trick? That's an 11 out of 10. Wow. That is an extremely risky trick. It saves quite a lot of time. Uh, it is very challenging to pull off, too. Uh, it combines like three or four different glitches into one. Uh, and really a big uh, boom for Team Boom Boom there, just be being able to pick up that time. We'll that's, see about, if, uh, uh, that's about seven seconds faster than the safest strat. I think another four seconds faster than the typical 
uh, raft fly uh, that that strong runners would choose. Dot's still not having to do any strats that he doesn't want to do. Uh, plenty of other places to make up time in this run. Absolutely. So, um, we'll see what he ends up doing here. Dots is Thanks. making a smart choice right now of picking the much more consistent and really not a huge time difference choice. You know, he, he is able to make it through there with almost 100% certainty, and it really isn't a huge difference. Considerably less swag, though. Considerably, Considerably less. less. So the next castle coming up is one that you would not see in the No Star World route. This is Lemmy's Castle. Magikoopa can be a real pain by not defeating Magikoopa at the beginning. Makes this strategy a bit more difficult on Truman. Seems to be having no problems with it, though. Nice room one. Yeah, there are consistent setups there for making sure that you don't end up getting screwed over by um, Magikoopa. All right, we see Aaron right now going into VD3. He gets his pick. You know, he can, he can go for some really risky strats to try to make up that time, or he can just try to uh, basically continue along and, and hope that Truman and Dots uh, make some error. So this stage right here, uh, you know, in a manner of speaking, it can be considered an auto-scroller. You do have to wait on some of these cycles here, um, but you can skip quite a lot of them, and, and Truman did a great job with that. We have a $500 donation from BK that says, Good luck, Aaron, Truman, and Dots. Off good game. Team Boom Boom, Team Reznor, and Team Birdo. Probably have time for a couple more donations. No problem. We have a $40 donation from Ballistic Buddha that says, Shout outs to the Yoshi Bongos. <laughs> we have a $10 donation from Simon W that says, Good luck to Truman from all the way back home. Remember to be speedy quick and make your heart proud. We have a $200 donation from Pat D that says, Go Team Reznor. Truman representing the state of Ohio, which actually doesn't have anything else to do in it but speedrunning, from what I can tell. A lot of speedrunners from Ohio. Really cool Buckeye speed bash just happened, but they got LeBron. So that stage uh, looks challenging for everything to line up, but this is another instance of you almost have to imagine that uh, the designers of Super Mario World had sort of speedrunning in mind because it just feels like everything lines up perfectly. Truman is Probably going to go for a really crazy strat here. Yep. I like that idea. Okay. So he's going to bail out of that strat right there. Uh, he was setting up for a strat called Cookie Mountain Boss Kill. You, um, you spawn a uh, glitched, fake, whatever you want to call it, Koopa Kid. Um, through a series of really complicated glitches and timings, uh, and then you kill it with fire and jump back on Yoshi, and the stage ends as if you've just beaten a castle. Yeah, this game has a, a lot of very broken aspects to it, especially when it comes to like ace categories. You can, what's what's the quickest time you can beat this game in? I think the current world record is uh, just over a minute. Yeah. So there's a lot of different weird stuff that you can glitch in there. Ooh. All right, so Dots is going for it now. Uh, he missed the, uh, a part of the glitch called Double Tongue, um, so he wasn't in the glitch state that would have allowed him to try it, so he's just going to continue on. Not losing too much time for either of them to Dots try Dots has it. chosen to activate uh, Yoshi Flight, um, an interesting mechanic uh, where he's able to fly as if he's just riding his cape like normal, but he has Yoshi with him. Uh, the reason he keeps sticking out his tongue is so that Yoshi doesn't turn around. Yoshi's actually not capable of facing the other direction. Uh, while his tongue is out. Really difficult room Truman doing here. Do um, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so uh, this, this room right here that Truman just got done with and that you'll see from Dots in a minute uh, requires a pretty good understanding of how your cape mechanics work um, because it basically uh, relies heavily on 
manipulating your flight timers to sort of line up in the right way. I'm not sure whether or not Dots will go for that shot or whether or not he'll just take the early fire flower and do it uh, without cape. This is a pretty common choice uh, to make right here where you scroll the screen so that the fireballs are a little more out of the way. It's interesting to see the difference in approaches here between Dots and Truman. Truman kind of going for some riskier strats. Dots playing a little bit more conservatively. Um, it'll be interesting to see who finishes on top with that uh, strategy. One of the costliest bosses here to not have a uh, Fire Flower for um, saves about how much time? Uh, the Fire Flower for this one, I think it saves about 12 seconds. Yeah. Maybe a little more. So uh, coming up in this next stage, um, Truman is probably going to be going for Forest of Illusion 1 Wings. Um, he's going to do the same block duplication, uh, a similar block duplication to what we saw in Vanilla Dome 1, where he duplicated a few blocks, and then we saw Yoshi Wings that we weren't expecting. Uh, in this case, he's actually, instead of needing to create a glitched uh, Wings block, he's going to make use of the Pea Balloon block because of a strange property with the Pea Balloon blocks, which is that they're actually the same exact block as uh, Wings blocks, just based on what their X position is. So he's going to duplicate a block off to the side in hopes of getting uh, Yoshi Wings. But he's unfortunately going to have to do it over a pit. Not able to pull that yeah, he could have tried it again, but he lost the... Um, lost the shell. Lost the shell, so it was better off just to move on. It doesn't lose a lot of time going for that. Um, and honestly, you don't save a lot of time going <laughs> for it either, but it's a really interesting strat. And done optimally, you can save up to seven seconds. So, What's the swag rating of that strat? Pretty high. I think it's pretty high anytime you have a strat that uh, saves very little time, but you know, can fail catastrophically. <laughs> uh, so once again, in the reputation of Super Mario World, yet another stage with a glitch. Um, Truman is going to try to clip out of bounds using his Yoshi. First try. First try, try every time. First, first try. This can be a big reset point for a lot of runners. Uh, there's an RNG factor where you can get pushed out attempting that clip, and uh, there's not much you can do about it. So um, it's both ex execution and luck, and um, Truman getting it first try there is, is All right, really well, good Aaron team. is just now wrapping up uh, Ludwig's Castle, and we're going to be seeing him going into Forest of Illusion 1, attempting the wings as well. Mm. I don't think Dots That's the RNG we're them. talking about. Uh, Dots pulling it off but getting pushed out, unfortunately. Yeah, um, unfortunately for this strat, uh, for clipping out of bounds... The second try is really Great job. Fine, though. Unfortunately for this strat, it's actually um, possible to manipulate the RNG in your favor, um, but you can never end up in a situation where you have a 100% chance of success, Yeah. Um, which is really unfortunate because that makes it a huge reset point for a lot of runners. There's been quite a, quite a lot of runs. Everyone has their war stories of being on fantastic TV pace and then getting knocked out of the wall ten times in a row and there goes, you know, a full minute. Yeah, and that clip saves a considerable amount of time. I mean, this is a long, winding swimming level that takes a long time to do as intended. There is a easier clip you can do and you could learn at home probably in five minutes, um, but that's still 30 seconds short, uh, longer than doing what they did. Absolutely. Now, coming up on the next level on Truman's side, he's about to perform what we call a Roy fly. Uh, he'll have to perform flight in between the middle of a bunch of potatoes. Has to perform the dive at the exact right time, otherwise it's into the lava. All right, so we have Aaron here going for Force of Illusion 1 wings. Yeah! And he gets yes. the wings, and he grabs them. Great job. Nice job by Aaron. Really well done. So this stage, it's intended that you ride the block snake at the bottom, and it's an extremely slow, uh, slow block snake and very difficult. But with some very careful <laughs> use of your cape, you can actually uh, avoid um, all of the obstacles that are in your way. One of the most satisfying tricks in SMW to learn, I think, just because it looks so cool. And it's not as hard as it possibly looks. Although messing it up is not good. Aaron getting Aaron. the clip very easily in Forced of Illusion 2. Wow. Great job, Aaron. Only one additional clip attempt between three runners is really impressive. Dot's doing uh, Roy Fly now. Making it look easy. Another great Roy fly from Dots. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but it made me scared. <laughs> nice. Nicely done. World 5 in Super Mario World is very much a sticking point for runners. We were talking about that. Everything seems to be going well so far for all of these runners. 
Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're probably like 15 seconds apart, 20 seconds apart, maybe. Um, what coming up uh, off in Sky do you think could possibly sway the, uh, the game in anybody's favor? Well, right now, Truman is going for a stage, and I'm going to go ahead and prepare you. It is very high on the swag rating. Okay. Uh, the reason for that is because it saves one in-game second if you <laughs> succeed and loses quite a lot of time if you fail it. But fortunately, it's quite free. You'll notice that Truman is now flying through the stage uh, much faster than he should be capable of doing. Um, but it's because he was able to conserve his flight uh, trigger as he goes through the pipe cannon, so it fired him out at a much faster speed and allowed him to fly on the other end of it. Um, as far as stages that we can see that might cause some problems, uh, World Seven or World Six Castle is definitely uh, a huge issue for a lot of runners. It's very challenging to pull off. Um, this stage right here, uh, people have been known to have some trouble. It's very difficult. So Aaron's going to really quickly grab another cape and take another shot at it. The Roy Fly is incredibly challenging. It takes just one incorrectly uh, performed pump to end up hitting one of those potabos and then uh, unfortunately losing your cape. Yeah, it's a very subtle movement differences that can make a huge issue for that technique. Uh, you end up flying through that room, uh, bonking your head on the ceilings at, at very specific times. And the issue with that is that um, if you mistime one of your uh, bonks, then your dive bomb isn't ready for you right when you need it to go underneath all those potaboos. And different uh, flight speeds can affect kind of how long of a distance you cover with each pump, which can make it tighter or, uh, you know, looser in terms of when to be able to do that dive bomb. So exactly. it takes a lot of reaction to kind of adjust to all of those different factors. So um, a special feature for uh, all castles is that you pick up this Yoshi here in, uh, in Chocolate Island 2, and the reason for that is he needs to hold on to that all the way up to uh, Valley of Bowser 2, where he's going to use actual real Yoshi wings this time, oh, intended by the legal developers. Ones. Yes. Wow. We have a $200 uh, donation from Jose that says, My first memory was playing Super Mario World, so my first donation during the run is an incredibly relay. Seems so right. So flying through this stage with Yoshi takes a lot of practice. It's, it's a, not a situation that a lot of runners are used to, so... Yeah, it's cool seeing these different categories for SMW that change levels that runners are really used to and add, you know, new wrinkles to them. Um, especially World 5 here is a big uh, a big one for that in this uh, All Castles one uh, compared to No Star World. Right. Yeah, that's a big issue with Super Mario World is that uh, the variety of different states the level can be in, whether or not you have cape, whether or not you have Yoshi, whether or not you've beaten Special World, whether or not you've hit certain Switch Palaces. Uh, makes it really easy for just subtle changes in the route or uh, changes in the goals uh, to make completely different categories. Absolutely. Nice pipe fly by Aaron. Definitely. Just as we come to the end of this relay, I do just want to encourage everybody to just go through the list of the people running in this relay and just follow them all. They're all really great runners. Uh, I watch almost all of them uh, on a regular basis, and they're just, you know... So talented, I think you guys could probably all notice that from how close this race is up to this point. So interesting to note here about Chaco Ghost House, to stay above this fishing boo in the middle of the stage is really difficult. What you don't oh. see is there's a pipe. Ooh. Now we may be seeing some catching up from Team Birdo here with uh, Truman losing cape here. Yeah, he's going to have to choose a slightly different strategy here. He was trying to uh, oh. cape cancel. Oh, okay. <laughs> just Author wanted Blue. to hold my breath for that. Visions of what game I could choose Author Blues is just running no, through side as he looks there. Both in the same castle now, getting even closer. And this is a, a clear opportunity for Dots to close the gap just a little bit. He's... Uh, Still got his cape. Uh, he's got the opportunity now to uh, close this gap quite a lot. So where will Truman be getting a new cape? Well, the very next stage, right at the beginning of it, there's another cape yeah. for him. And, and that won't be a huge problem. But playing this castle without a cape, I mean, hands down, in, in any no cape, no Star World uh, category, uh, or in any no cape, no Star World run, this is definitely one of the more difficult stages. Yeah. 
As you see Dots kind of flying through a lot of those cycles that you normally would have to platform through. Both of them on the same boss screen at the same time, just getting even closer. Nice. I mean, we are under 10 seconds apart, I think. I don't think any of these players are going for sandbar clip. <laughs> no, probably not. It would take them a completely different direction. So uh, coming up right now, we've got them going in a sunken ghost ship. It's a relatively long level, um, but the nice thing is, is all these runners are really competent at 96 exit. I would say that that's probably, with the exception of maybe Aaron, their preferred category, and Aaron's still really competent at 96 exit. Uh, Yoshi in sunken ghost ship is sort of like the default expectation for this stage. That's the default approach to this stage, and so um, I think that they're not going to have any trouble with that going forward. Even going into Valley of Bowser 1, having a Yoshi is going to be uh, a welcome a welcome reality. Do you want to explain how they despawn this boob ring coming up? Yeah, hopefully that's what we're going to see. So uh, these these boo clouds, um, you'll notice Truman just knocked himself off a of Yoshi twice. That, that was intentional, and you'll see Dots and Aaron do the same. Uh, he's basically trying to time out how the boo cloud despawns itself. Um, you'll notice that it fades in and fades out. There's a certain trigger in the stage where the boo cloud is supposed to stop appearing. Um, but if you can get the boo cloud to appear one more time, well you can done. despawn a boo ring that's right where he is right now. Um, it's supposed to complement the other boo ring that you're seeing right now. Um, but basically what you want to do is you want to make the boo ring uh, last, or the boo cloud last as long as possible um, so that it despawns at the right time to take the boo ring with it. Both Aaron, or both uh, Truman and Dots despawning the uh, boo ring with no issue there. Aaron's probably making the smart choice to, uh, to not do the um, kick Crusher cancel skip. through the crusher. Um, it's pretty consistent, but there are some flight speeds where just no matter what you do... There are some flight speeds where no matter what he does, uh, he ends up in a situation where he can... Uh, where he won't make the crusher skip. Or... I heard. <laughs> Valley of Bowser, definitely a challenging world in a lot of different categories for a lot of different reasons. With the amount of time that's between uh, Aaron and the other runners, we're probably going to see all three of them in the Bowser fight at the same time. It's incredibly likely that that's going to end up being where we are. That's crazy. Uh, especially if either of these two end up making even a single mistake throughout the course of the rest of this run. Uh, we're going to see all three runners on the final boss of the final game at the same time. I think that's amazing. Five games in. <laughs> We have a $50 donation from Audis that says, I always prefer to donate during Mario runs at GDQ. Gotta love the plumber and friends. Kill the Bowsers. Save the animals. Except the Yoshis. So right here, uh, Truman's going to take Yoshi through this room, and he's going to uh, get the Yoshi wings in the next room to end this stage early. Um, as mentioned before, Yoshi wings uh, obtain the normal exit of whatever stage you, you beat with them. He's going to leave the Yoshi behind because he's not particularly useful now. Another nice part about the All Castles uh, run versus the No Star World run is uh, there's a trick called Sandbar Clip there that is probably the most difficult trick in the, the run or one of the most difficult, and it's right at the end of the run. Uh, All Castles, we don't have that run ender coming up here, which is really nice. Uh, I wouldn't want to see a five-game race come down to one trick. That's really difficult to pull off. All right, let's see how he gets up to this key right here. And a clean nice. slide through. Fantastic. And Dots gets door fly. Dots out went of the for door fly. So Dots uh, did a slightly different setup. He uh, maintained his flight trigger through the door. <laughs> Wonderful job. He maintained his flight trigger through the door in the first room and opted to fly through the stage. All right, so Truman just took a moment to scroll the screen to the left. That was an intentional time. Uh, time loss so that he could uh, skip the first two pencils, uh, the, the skewers. Scrolls the screen back again. Oh my god. Wow. Really, really good job. That was an amazing... This, this room, in the entirety of the game, 
is probably one of the most challenging and technical rooms to do quickly. Dot's Truman, getting hit. Truman just pulled off the fastest variant of that stage. Dot's losing two capes. I'm thinking door three for Dots then. Yeah, Dots will almost certainly be taking uh, door three in Bowser's Castle. Uh, it's a slight departure from what you would see from a lot of speedruns, um, but by having door three, uh, he can pick up an extra cape, uh, or in this case, a cape. This Truman is, is going to actually have the benefit from having both capes uh, to be able to take also a slightly different route uh, through Bowser's Castle than a lot of people see. Uh, oh, you don't have both? I thought I saw a second cape in... Oh, no, no never mind. No door five this time. You know what? Don't worry about me. This is Truman's race to lose now for Team Boom Boom. He's got a considerable lead here, and as long as everything goes well with the Bowser fight, it should be Team Boom Boom in first. That All right, so he's going to be going through uh, door seven in this case. Unable to maintain his uh, speed to keep get fly early on in the room, but able to recover nicely. Definitely. The dark room, no reason to turn on the lights. That takes time. It also uh, lags the game a little bit. It is like a disco light, so... And we're not here for a party. Yeah. Okay, Truman going on into Bowser. So Dots went and grabbed the hidden cape that's in that stage. Oh, oh that's tough. You want to explain a bit about Cape Kill? Yeah, so uh, the the normal operation for this fight is you want to get the Mega Koopas and then you want to drop them on Bowser's head, which is what you're seeing here. Um, you can save quite a bit of time, actually, by hitting the Mega Koopas right as Bowser throws them out, so they hit him right on his head uh, as he's throwing them. And that's a, that's a pretty significant time save. Uh, optimal non-Cape Kill versus optimal Cape Kill is something like 12 seconds different, so uh, it really does add up. Truman's going here for uh, a strategy uh, we refer to as ball skip. In this phase right here, um, Bowser drops two bowling balls. Um, but if you drop the second Mecha Koopa, or if you drop that Mecha Koopa on his head right as he's stopping to drop the second bowling ball, he, like, forgets. There's no way he has room for that bowling ball in there. Truman going into the last phase of Bowser now. We're getting really close. Time is going to be when uh, Peach appears coming out of Bowser's clown car. We're very close. Okay. Dot's also going for ball skip here. Doesn't You don't need to have Gabe to go for it. Looks like you pulled that off correctly. Here we go. <clears throat> and Truman finishes yeah. off Bowser. And Team Boom Boom, Boom, Boom wins. Right there. All right, Dots is still heading into the third phase of Bowser, right as Aaron's going to be entering Bowser's castle. So we're actually very close still. Aaron's going to be entering Bowser's castle with both of his capes, which means we may actually get to see the really cool uh, strategy in door five. I'm not sure whether or not he's going to go for it or uh, stick with what he feels more comfortable with. Uh, he, he is a... Um, very skilled any percent runner, and he may feel more confident in door seven. I'm not sure. No, he's nice going for it right dots. here. He's going for the damage boost. Just enough eye rooms to get past. That saves a pretty significant amount of time over doing door five the normal way, and saves time even over doing door seven uh, uh, the normal way that you would see from a speedrunner. All eyes on Team Reznor. Come on, Aaron, bring it home. Finish this off, Aaron. Come on. Good run, man. 
This has been an incredibly close relay. It's so hard to believe that after five games, we're going to end up with all of our teams ending within four minutes of one another. I think that that's just unbelievable and speaks volumes to the skill and consistency of our runners that we 100%. have here today. There's not one runner in this marathon that you should not be following. This race was really amazing. And if honestly, you like Mario so games, impressive. these are your people. And 15 of the top 2D Mario runners. And many of them run a variety of these games. They're not just sticking to one Mario game. So yeah, guys, once again, major shout-outs to all of these amazing runners. And shout-outs to our couch commentators giving such great entertainment. Also, major shout-outs to our tech and audio crew yeah. for getting this all set up for you guys. No big deal. NBD, as the kids say. What happened to him was actually a very common mistake. Uh, if you turn around, if you don't turn around before you touch the side of the screen for the first hit in the second phase, uh, you can accidentally pull Mario away from the wall, which you would have no way of really knowing that that's happening um, just because of the fact that he's off screen at the time. So it's very easy to drop the Mecha Koopa uh, and not realize that you're not dropping it anywhere near his head. Oh. <laughs> with 247-12, Team Berta with 244-23, and congrats to Team Boom Boom for 243-40.